There we go. Now we're cooking. Oh, whoops. I forgot one thing. My lights. There we go. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. All right, um, let's go ahead and do a mic check. So, Supa, just say some random stuff, and uh, we'll see if you sound good. Hello, hello. Is my mic good? Is it on? Your mic's definitely good. We just need to make sure the vocal quality's fine. All right. Hi, Shrix. Yeah, Shrix. Yeah, Shrix. Shrix is here. All right, you sound good. All right, let's go. Awesome. Um, just so, just a little quick disclaimer, guys. Um, if I sound off, it's because I'm kind of dealing with a cold right now, so that's why I got some tea here. So, I'm gonna power through this because this is the season two finale. My resident, he's. I'm like all mixed up here. This is the season two finale of the Pokey Nerds Inc. podcast, guys. So there's no way I was gonna miss this out. <laughs> but Supa, are you ready to get rolling? Ready to get rocking? I am, I am ready. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna try to say this without my normal um utter tone nerds call, but I'll do my best. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the fellow Pokey Nerds of the world, welcome to the season two finale of the Poke Nerds Incorporated podcast, a Pokemon exclusive podcast just for us Poke Nerds to sit down, relax, and get to know other fellow Pokemon content creators in the Pokemon community. I am your host, the Top Goon Spence of the Poke Network. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know who the guest of honor is, allow me to formally reintroduce you to her. She is the second co-leader of the team yell stream team who streams i miss consistently because we have that freaking giant time zone difference and you stream while i'm while i'm in bed but with all smiles and giggles and all the rowdiness in the world ladies and gentlemen supercell hello hello how's everybody doing today thank you so much spence for having me i appreciate it it's really cool this is probably the second or third podcast i've ever done and the fact that it's Pokemon related makes it even better because, as you said, we're all Poke nerds. So what a great place to to hang out and just be able to talk about Pokemon. Oh yeah, definitely. But um, uh, fun fact, everybody, Supa was in my uh, OG recruitment um, for between for season one. So I'm uh, she finally. So this is her finally. She's getting her her chance to be in the spotlight. I think as of now, there's only one more person that has was in my initial recruitment list that has not been on the show so they're gonna be in season three though oh okay nice yeah you know him he's part of the team i won't say who he is but you know ah oh, gotcha gotcha but first off um again um supa i want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to sit down with us for a couple hours and chat about what makes you the pokey nerd that you are no problem. I'm happy to be here, honestly, and I'm glad that my work allowed me to do so. <laughs> so yeah, I know I you're. Like, a I need to make it. Yeah, Go I know ahead. you're a bu you're, you're a busy woman, so I appreciate you taking the time. No problem. All right, but the reason why, as uh, as you guys can see, I got a little festive this time because this is technically the pre-Christmas episode. So kind of like how I dressed uh, me and Cyber dressed up for Halloween. I'm getting a little getting a little festive with the layout and also my hat. But, I like it. It looks good. Yeah, I mean, I could I could swap the fedora any time, but I'm, uh, I think I'm going to stick with the hat. <laughs> but anyway, also, the bow ties as usual, because as you guys know, the season season two of Poke Nerds Inc. is dedicated to our very good friend, our brother, our fellow Poke Nerd, the True Turbo, who passed away uh, late July this year. <sighs> we I recently got reminded about Turbo um, on Twitter because the cookie jar sends out like um, the, the advent calendar stuff, and I saw one, saw one about him, so I just... It's retweeted all that about him. Yeah, I saw that one as well. <sighs> yeah. But hey, it's a yeller podcast. I'm going to try and be as loud as I can despite my throat being sore. So let's go ahead and get rocking. So um, the first thing I'd like the guests to do is to give um, a basic introduction to themselves. Um, so just uh, introduce yourself again. Um Explain what types of content you produce and just a retrospective of your Twitch journey, where you started, um, what got you into creation, and where you are now. So, Supa, you got the floor. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Supercell. Some people call me Supa. Some people call me Cell. It's your choice. Um, I have been doing Twitch for since 2015. 
Um, I initially started it as a, a way to just be able to communicate and be um, okay with talking to people in public. or just, So I used online social media to do that. Um, of course, I experienced a lot of different hates from different communities because as a female, um, for someone who doesn't have a very super feminine voice, like you experience a lot of different things from people. Um, where a lot of people don't believe that you're a girl or you're a guy, and then they, or some people get upset that a girl is playing video games or whatever. So I was, I pushed through that. Um, my content didn't start with Pokemon, actually. Uh, I started out with Call of Duty, and then I went from Call of Duty to um, streaming Splatoon and other Nintendo games, and then it switched over to Fortnite and Nintendo. And then that's actually right around the time when, um, I was learning about shiny hunting. Gen 7 had just came out and I was like, I had a friend who had watched for video editing because I wanted to learn better, better video, video editing tips. And he was like, oh, one day, like I'm, I'm starting Twitch. We're going to be doing a lot of shiny hunting. If you don't know what that is, tune into the stream. I'll be live on Twitch. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's actually where I met my friend Beefy. And we have been friends ever since. And he's actually the one that taught me how to shiny hunt. Since that day, I wanted to learn how to shiny hunt. Shortly after, Let's Go Pikachu Eevee came out. And he's like, Suba, this is going to be the best time for you to learn how to shiny hunt. If you really want to get into shiny hunting, this is how, you, how it's going to, how it's all going to work out. It's going to be super easy. Um, and then if you want to get advanced from there and you like it, we, I can show you some other methods. And that's when I officially switched over to streaming Pokemon. And I fell in love with the Pokemon community and shiny hunting as a whole. Um, so since 2018 is roughly right about when I joined the Pokemon community and I just absolutely love it. Um, my content now is, it started out as like, uh, shiny hunting on one screen. Cause I wasn't sure like how everybody else was doing multiple hunts at the same time. I was like, that's crazy. You guys are crazy. Like that's, that doesn't make any sense. And then I feel like as over time, the, uh, the more hunts that you do or you you realize like okay this is kind of slow i can do two at the same time you bring the second one in and it may be a little hard at first and then it gets easier over time or like okay two is not enough let me bring on a third one right <laughs> so i start a third one and i'm like okay this is this is fun and let me bring in another one now i'm slowly bringing myself up to like five devices um i need to get two that are going to be connected but I, at this point i feel like i should just call myself like the pokemon multitasking streamer because not even sometimes i do shiny hunting i do shiny hunting in other games at the same time just because it's hard to please everyone and when i know that i can pull off playing one game while shiny hunting or playing multiple games while shiny hunting on multiple devices i'm like okay this is fun and then people come in and they're like how are you gaming on multiple games and also shiny hunting on multiple devices at the same time i was like i don't even know i have no idea <laughs> But yeah, that's that's roughly about me, and the, that's basically all the stuff that I do. Um, I absolutely love streaming, and the fact that I've been doing it about like this amount of years, like people ask me, like, how do you seem so natural with it? And I was like, it's just been years of practice and experience. So um, e even then, like, if I do seem quote unquote professional, um, it's more of the fact just it's years of experience and like being able to be comfortable with presenting yourself and just talking as a whole. And I think it's the best way, honestly, for someone who grew up introverted like me um, to start. <laughs> you're just too, like, you're just speaking from the same horn because I've just been an introvert all my life and like Pokemon's been like the biggest constant and all that. But uh, you guys got something in common. I mean, when it came to shiny hunting, we both really got into it starting with the Sun and Moon franchise or should I say, you got introduced to it around the Sun and Moon franchise, so I got a lot to Sun and Moon in terms of my shiny hunting career. But yeah, uh, in terms of like naturality, I hear a lot of people say that whenever like whenever somebody raids me, I go into the other screen, like give myself an introduction. People say that I just pull that off so swimmingly, so smoothly. They're like, dude, I'm so jealous that you can s smoothly pull that off without stuttering or something like that. I mean, I've perfected that to nearly a T over the past couple of years, so it's like... Despite my autism, it's like, holy crap, I can still do that. Exactly. Uh, it's it just, like, I don't know. I think when you do it several times, it becomes second nature to you. And sometimes, I don't know if you ever get this feeling, um, but when you say your introduction or whatever, it, it kind of, 
like, oh, wait, did I just say my introduction? I don't remember what I just said, but you said it. <laughs> I don't know if you ever experienced that where you like you say it, but it just becomes so routine like that. You just forget you say it, but you know you said it. Yeah, I know. I, I feel the same way. Whenever I start a stream, whenever I end a stream, whenever somebody raids me and I go to my other monitor, I, I, the exact same way you just said that. Mm -hmm. I know I did it, but I forgot that I did it. Exactly. All right. But uh, for people who are on my end, you already know about this. But for those on Super Zen who don't know about me, allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Spence. And again, welcome to the Pokey Network. I'm a, I am classify myself as a variety Pokemon streamer because I stream all types of Pokemon related content. I stream shiny hunting, I do challenge runs, I do Nuzlocke races, I do playthroughs. Next year I'm going to try to get into Soul Link as soon as I find the right partner. But any, I do pretty much any type of Pokemon content outside of Pokemon Go and Sleep because I don't do those mobile games. It's just like I don't do that at all. But um, my content creation story starts in 2019 where I am just full, so in-depth with the YouTube um, community. I mean, I wasn't actually a part of it, but I will. I have watched so many YouTube videos regarding Pokemon. It's like, I want to do this so badly. We got to hydrate. Ah, thank you for the hydrations. Don't worry, Bells. I'm going to be doing this all, all day. But KK, if you want us to answer that question, you know, how, you know what to do. All right. But so I know that I knew that all right away because the way I am and uh, and everything, I know that I wasn't going to be able to actually talk to anybody regarding this because even I had just moved down to Tennessee like two years after that. And um, I still really didn't really know anybody because I was just an industrial slave. So I was just really not going through, just going through the motions or anything. But what happened was um, I wanted to talk to somebody about this, so I, I reached out to MJ TV. I'm not sure if you know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, you know who he is. Cool. So I reached out to him. I, I sent him an email asking for like advice on how to start this journey of mine, and I was not expecting a response at all, but um, gracious to his heart, he did. And it was like he just gave me a few basic points on how to get started, so I just did that. So I'm... Uh, but uh, I went. My, my initial journey didn't actually start until twenty. The year we shall not mention, because I didn't have the finances to build my initial startup. So I took the incentive we got and invested all pretty much all of it into my starter setup. So my first stream was the Isle of Armor DLC release day back all the way back in two thousand. You know the year we shall not mention, and um. It took me a while to get the hang of um, social media integration and just becoming like a, an average chatter in other people's streams because I was just out here streaming just for the hell of it and I wasn't really doing much. Like I didn't become an affiliate till about six months after I initially started streaming. Well, actually now I think about it, it's more like seven months. But anyway, um, once I got affiliated, I got I got the feel of how to do this properly. So then I started, you know, doing all this stuff and um, I started doing more challenge runs. I started doing more shiny hunting. I had, had a dead set schedule. Then I, my community grew. And ever since then, this is the result of everything that's been a part. I mean, I mean, it took me a while to, it took a while for the Poké Network to get off the ground, but I'm here. I'm happy, even though I don't look like it right now because I'm sick, but I'm really, I'm really grateful for where I am in the, in the, not only the Twitch community, but also the Pokemon community as well. Because I honestly would not be where I am without Pokemon. So I owe a lot or pretty much everything I am to Pokemon. Likewise, same here. Because um, I it took me three years to get affiliated, actually. And it wasn't even just really a goal. I was, Like I said, I was just kind of using it as a medium to develop my communication skills. Um, because I was bullied for years. And I didn't. I same lost here. all of that. I was. I lost all of that. And... Honestly, I owe so much to Twitch. Like, I love Twitch so much that um, it helped me figure out, like, what I wanted to go to school for. I ended up getting in uh, communications and media, or a.k.a. mass communications. And mm -hmm. um, I, it, it's helped, like, Twitch literally helped me get the job that I have now. Is it a good job? Yes. Is it the best job? No. I mean, I get my hours taken away from me. So it's like, that's why I haven't been super, super active, but I've been trying to get back into that. Um, but yeah, I think like Twitch has done so much for me in my life that like, I, 
love it. And it, I probably wouldn't have been able to actually meet the friends that I made through Twitch in person if it wasn't for Twitch, honestly. Because if I look back then, we're like, oh, no, I can't meet people that I met online. Like, I could talk to them, but, like, meeting them in person, that's a whole new level. Like, what the heck? And then now, like, you go to conventions or if you're in town with someone, you go meet up with their friend. Like, hey, you're going to be here. Like, we should meet up. And you're like, all right, bet. Let's go. I mean, I feel so, the same way. I would have never met any of my mods IRL, and I never would have met Beefy IRL, which he's there he is right there. Yep. Hi, Beefy. What's up, brother? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we have a question from KK. So for both, which of the new past and future paradoxes are your favorites, including the walking wake and iron leaves? So the between the three, between the paradox sacred beast and the paradox swords of justice, which one do you like the most? Oh no, I'm sorry. I was hoping maybe a Gen 9 question wouldn't come out. <laughs> um, so I haven't finished the game, and I haven't gone past, like, the second gym. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Have you yeah. seriously not pl played through Scarlet and Violet completely? Yeah. <laughs> My apologies. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm... I'm... I'm I'm genuinely shocked right now. Yeah, it's a uh, so it's a long story. I di I didn't really understand like the game messes with me um in a sense where like I don't know what I'm doing and so I just also haven't had time to rush through it and I I was originally doing the story and stuff on stream um but it became too complicated for me. I don't know what it is. It's just I, it could just be that I'm dumb dumb but I also have like other disability so i don't know what it is but it's like i think i need to finish the story offline away from stream um i haven't i only have like one shiny which is the small of uh actually i think shrix and uh, big cat were the ones that helped me uh find shiny small because that was like the one shiny i wanted to have and then like since then like i tried playing through it and i'm like i have no idea what i'm doing and i wasn't able to to finish it so i went back to my other hunts and then just kind of completely forgot about the game so i i apologize for probably being the only pokemon person here who hasn't completed gen 9 and knows nothing about it well then that prob well then that's going to save us a little time later today because I was going to say let's talk about the DLC that released in terms of Pokemon news but since you haven't played it then that means we can pretty much scrap that category off because that's only like the that's like the biggest piece of news in terms of Pokemon right now so <laughs> right, I'm sorry but uh KK uh my favorite is the Paradox Entei no contest um I won't reveal its name yet because we're still doing spoiler free stuff around here so yeah, the Paradox Entei is my favorite. It looks absolutely stunning. Like, probably one of the best, like, one of the top five best designed Pokemon, in my opinion. Oh, that's good. Because I, I remember seeing some Paradox ones, and I was like, I don't know if I like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah, it's it's freaking bomb. All right, so now on to the next topic. Um, Is the origin of your channel name. So where did Supercell come from? So the origin of my channel name... Uh, it's actually not that exciting, um, but I guess hey, you. I've 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 fatal vixen literally just put it in a name generator, so I've heard it all. So, answer, oh okay. So, so just all right. Just so, so uh, hit, me, hit me what you got. All right, so my channel name. Uh, back when I was a freshman, I was part of another community, and I made friends through there, and. I still have yet to meet her. Um, she lives in Arizona, and we were just... She, I've known her since she was, like, a freshman in high school, and I was a freshman in, in, in college. So she was like, Cell, I need a nickname for you. And everybody called me Cell. Like, I have no idea. I, I, I gave them nicknames. They knew my first name and everything. And I was like, you guys can just call me this. She's like, no, we like Cell. Cell suits you. And I'm like, all right. And her her nickname for her was, like, The Queen because she was, like, the queen of everything um very very girly very dramatic and very obsessive with certain things and so she's like yeah we need a, we need a good nickname for you i'm like all right and one day she's like how about supercell and i'm like i was like why she's like because you're super awesome and i'm like okay sure i mean and i guess so it stuck with that and then when at the time like my original username for like everything online was lena lena 4 
and that's just because of my nickname and that was always what people called me in softball and everything they're like lena lena or just lena and i was like that sounds dumb and as i was just sitting on my bed playing call of duty and getting getting ready to go for my next stream i was like i need a cool name like i looked at my call of duty black ops 2 username and i'm like this is dumb i mean it's great but I feel like if I'm going to make a presence online, it's got to be something more exciting. So it was originally Supacell with S-U-P-A-H. But I was like, the A looks funny and throws it off. And I wanted to make something unique. So I was looking on Twitch to see if anybody had S-U-P-U-H. No one had it. So I was like, Supacell. That looks cool. It sounds awesome. There we go. Supacell. But before I had made that username... I asked my friend, like, hey, is it okay if I take your nickname for me and use it as my username but change it around a bit um, for the stuff that I'm going to be doing online? She's like, yeah, that's fine. It's great. And I'm like, all right, cool. So that's basically the origin of my username. It's not super exciting, but, yeah, that's where it comes from. Hey, all in my opinion, all these stories are amazing. So it's not – don't under, don't underestimate uh, your history. <laughs> but all right. Um so you know this because I met you under my previous incarnation and you recruited me under my previous incarnation, but the Poke Network is not my original username. Right. Yeah, and you know it, and Beefy knows it, and everyone in the chat probably knows it. So for those of you who don't know, my OG username is not the Poke Network. It was called the S Poke Network. So allow me to explain where all that came about. So when I knew... um. When I knew the path I wanted to take as a content creator, you know, being a Pokemon exclusive guy, I knew I wanted Pokemon to be a part of my username. So Pokey is the most human, the most used like part of it. So I'm going to Pokey to be in my username. But um, when I was in college, um, I went for business administration and um, I won't give too much detail about business courses, but they include a lot of group projects. So I had to network with a lot of people between different courses for um uh for probably like two two years just to get my diploma just to get my degree and i was like hmm i'm good at networking pokey network that has a ring to it pokey network that has a ring i'm gonna use this so when i went and put it into twitch of course it was taken by some random non-active bot account or something i honestly don't know so i was like okay what am i gonna do now i didn't think of the at the time because i thought it was just too generic because just putting the in front of a username was like, okay, what am I going to do about this? So I decided just to put S in front of there because S is just my first initial. My real legal name is Spencer, so that's what I did. But um, little did I know how much chaos it would it would, uh, it would uh, produce because Twitch does not allow you to use hyphens in your username. And I don't like using underscores, so the S was right next to the P. So you can imagine how many people mispronounced my name over the two and a half years I used that name. Yeah, I was one of them, not gonna lie. I'm sorry. Yes, I remember fully. I remember nearly everybody who has mispronounced my name over the past over the past four years. Uh spe specifically my my friend well, I don't know if I can well um a streamer that I know, the Raven Armed. He is a cosplay streamer, but uh he notoriously mispronounced my name whenever I was in his streams or whenever he came around my neck of the woods. I mean it's just like, oh my god, dude quit pronouncing my name wrong and it, it it went on for years between like spoke network s poke spokey uh spoken i don't know how that got spoken when e is not in front of the n oh wait actually technically it is so <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was just chaos so then i finally just like i've had enough i dropped the s i put in the v and it's been um a very professional and drastic change ever since I like it. I, I think it looks good. Um, but I, I also experienced the same thing, so I, I understand. I, and the good thing about, like, for me, is that when someone usually corrects me on their username, I usually tend to remember it. That's something that I've gotten good at, so um, I know I did get better at that. But for me, like, I get mispronunciations with my username all the time. It, it happens even if the person knows me, like, every now and then, they'll accidentally say it another way. Like, I get Suppa Cell or, um, Super Seal, or I get Super Seals quite often, or Suppa Seal. It, it at this time, I was like, sometimes I want to make like an alt account, just be Super Seal or something, or Spiel, make it funny and just use the Pokemon Spiel. 
Oh my god, that's a, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, the one thing that has remained constant regarding my channel is, of course, my my overall theme and also my logo. Like because I owe a lot to Sword and Shield because it was the first game I streamed. Um, my the my logo will forever be the sword font, no matter no matter how I say my name or pronounce my or, or how I stylize my name or anything like that. It's gonna be the sword font, no matter what. I love the sword font. That is one of my favorite fonts, and, yeah. and that's where we got like a lot of our stuff for Team Yell too. Yeah, which is why I'm a perfect fit because I'm almost a personification of Spike Muth. <laughs> I like the second I, I like the second I got one of this team. I'm like, okay, I don't care what I gotta do. I need to join this team no matter what. I, I don't care yeah. what I gotta. I don't care what I gotta do. I need to be on this team. So first, so actually, I didn't th thank you this again, but I I've thanked you multiple times. But I want to thank you so much for you and Beefy for allowing me to be a loud and proud member of the Team Yell Stream Team. Yeah, of course. Like, I, mean, I remember when uh, Beefy and I sat down. Like anytime we have like Team Yell meetings, it's it's always about like, all right, when are we going to open app applications? Um, who are we going to look at in terms of reviewing? And we absolutely just loved your channel, and we loved everything about it, like how it was just so dedicated to uh, Gen 8 and Obstagoon, and we're like, dude, this guy's rad. <laughs> um, and I was like, this, we can't not just have this person on our team. Like, we are all about, like, Gen 8 team yell yelling about shinies and all that kind of stuff. And, like, we're, like, Obstagoon is, like, our mascot, right? We, like, we have to see if this guy is interested and so that's when we reached out to you and you were super happy to join so well you were the very first pokemon stream team to welcome me to your ranks so i was gonna say yes no matter what <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad you joined us and i'm glad you're still here oh yeah no doubt no matter even if i wind up joining another stream team you guys are still gonna be in my main team i've i've a i saw beefy type something is it okay if i comment on that real quick uh yeah he said before me most people just called you sell that is absolutely true um it's funny because going back to earlier when i was saying how i first met beefy um uh, every he was the only one that pr pretty much called me supa it, him and and our friend cool fire uh and the streamer that we watched at the time was like it's not supa it's Sell. you can't just call someone supa and it has to be like their username that's after the main part of their username and we're like why is it a big deal and he just he would get so upset about it and then bb would just be like nah it's super it's super he's like it sounds better <laughs> so yeah any for a lot of the times a lot of people just called me sell and i think the more people got to know both beefy and i or just see us and chat and everything it it slowly became supa and now it's just more by the supa or cell but i hear supa a lot more often than it is cell now it's crazy it's crazy how it's changed i mean a lot of people a lot of people either call me pokey or network unless they know my name and then they call me by my name yeah cuz that's you, like do you I have a preference yeah, um, yeah, like I, I think more of the Pokey Network as my brand name over my actual like presence on Twitch. So if somebody knows my name, I like, I prefer them to call me Spence. Okay. But I will accept, I will accept uh, somebody calling me Pokey Network or Pokey or Network. Just, yeah, just I'm, I'm more of a first name basis kind of guy. Makes sense. Yeah, that's why, like, whenever I was on my my trip with my mod squad i literally st literally called them by their first names the whole time and they were like so off-putting because i'm a first name basis kind of guy like you they, they can contest to that but anyway speaking of my mods we got one from my mod bella um for both if you ever collected pokemon uh, collected cards what was your favorite pokemon card Ooh, uh out of all the cards that i have even like the ones that i get today uh I think my most favorite one that I have is from like the early 2000s. Uh, I didn't know anything about shiny Pokemon. I was just looking over my old Pokemon cards that I had. And I was like, wait, this Pikachu looks different. It, it, oh, wait, there's a star on it. It's a shiny Pikachu. I have a shiny Pikachu card. What the heck? And I had no idea. So if I didn't know anything about shiny hunting or anything about shiny Pokemon... I would have never known what that card was, but then, oh, like a couple years ago, when I was looking through that and I found that, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. The fact that I have the shiny Pokemon card in very good condition, because I anytime back then, 
when I used to just have cards, I just all put them in a binder. I had no idea about collecting and how collecting works, honestly. I just put them in a binder because I wanted to protect them. I didn't even know how to play the TCG game yet. So I, I think that's one of my favorite it. cards. Really, it's so fun. I still I don't know how it. to play it, even though they did. Even though they did that t- cartoon series on YouTube, I still don't know how to play it. There's a cartoon series. Yeah, that's like a, yeah, there's a like a four episode cartoon series about the TCG on like YouTube. I oh, can't, I'm gonna have I'm to for- look that up. Yeah, I forgot what it's called though. But anyway, um, out of all the cards I have, it's a tie between that Lugia V that I pulled and this uh, shiny Obstacle card. I like that card. That's awesome. Yeah, my second. My- my second like a, favorite is a shiny Toxel that I got, and it took me so long to to find that one. Cool, yeah. Uh, my my coworker Hunter gave this to me for Christmas um, after my back surgery. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's he was gonna gift. give it. Well, he was gonna give it to me regardless of the surgery or not. But I'm uh, I'm just saying that's what happened. He couldn't give it to me like right. when he wanted wanted to give it to me because I was stuck at home. Right. All right, but anyway. All right, so now that we got the basics out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty details on what makes you the Poke Nerd you are. So I I know the answer right away. So Supa, what is your favorite Pokemon and why? Uh, Toxel and Toxtricity combined. Toxel just because it's the pre evolution of Toxtricity, but I've always been like a music themed Pokemon fan. Like for a while, it was Meloetta. <laughs> um, but when Gen Eight Gen Eight came out and I saw toxicity even the gmax one was like what pokemon is that i was like forget meloetta see ya well i was like all right i like toxicity and the fact that there's two forms i was like okay i love this pokemon this pokemon's awesome and that's why i have this shirt on today (laughs) my (laughs) tox my toxicity uh t-shirt because i I love toxicity and then toxel is just a cute angry baby fun fact i used a shot i used a uh amped form oh wait which one's the yellow one the amped. Yeah, I use amped form toxicity on my first team, my first sword team. That's awesome. I wanted I call- to do that, but I was I wanted to get a shiny one, so I was like, I could always go back and do a shiny dream team for shield or something. Heck, I used the shiny uh, Grimmsnarl on my first playthrough of shield. Oh wow! I did hunt that, for did it, you but I that- still used it. Oh, you you hunt you hunted for it, or you found it as a random encounter? No, I I, I hunted for it because I wanted to use the shiny no matter what. Oh okay, that's awesome. But yeah, I if didn't I didn't know have... what the shiny looked like. Yeah, it's it's white. But uh, but yeah, if uh, if I had if I already have not played through Sword and Shield ten times, I probably would have done a Dream Team quest in that game already. But nope. I want to do one. I got to finish my Dream Team quest for, or my shiny, what is it? Yeah, shiny Dream Team quest for um, shiny no. Brilliant Diamond. I haven't finished that one yet. Uh, I tried to do an SBQ in Brilliant Diamond, but I couldn't get past the briefcase. Oh no. How far did uh, you get? A thousand between two copies. Yikes. Yeah, but um I... yeah, I'm 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 thinking about doing um another um dream I'm thinking of doing a dream team quest, but I need to figure out which game I want to do it in because I only have limited access between the games I already own, so I have to think about it. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, anyway, it comes as no surprise that my favorite Pokemon is Obstagoon. It's my mascot. It's team team one of Team Yell's mascots. So allow me to explain why it is that. So when Generation Eight came around, um, at the time Darkrai was my favorite Pokemon for nearly ten years, and um, I honestly did not think there was going to be a Gen Eight Pokemon that would decrown it. But then all of a sudden, um, the Galarian forms for Linoon and Zigzagoon were introduced, and I'm like, huh, these look interesting. Then all of a sudden, bam, this little noodle guy evolves into this giant honey badger-looking, monster-looking thing, and I'm like, holy crap. So it jumped into my top ten pretty much, um, jumped into my top ten pretty much instantly based on looks alone, without knowing too much about it, and the fact that it was a dark and normal type. But, um, when I finally got to use it in my first playthrough of Sword, um, it was... It was an absolute abomination. This thing is absolutely stacked with decent coverage moves and a gut set with facade and a flame orb. It just wrecks everything in sight. Everything in sight. It's it, it's a complete monster. I've seen so many. Uh, no, you're stuck on a different. Right? Yeah, yeah, beefy. You have to rub salt in my wounds on a, when I'm sick and down and out. <laughs> 
But anyway. Uh, so, obviously, it was like my second favorite after Darkrai for a bit, but then I needed to think of a mascot for the whole channel and whatnot. So, I knew Patters at the time was using Darkrai as like a co-mascot with like Sub Noodle, Rallet, and other things. So, I was like, I can't really think about, I don't want to feel like I'm copying him. So I, uh, I I just went with Obstagoon, and after that, it became my number one, and it's still my number one to this day. Nothing has decrowned it yet. Wow. But. So the emote, the emote that BP just typed in, I love it. Oh, that's one of the that's one of Typhlosion's uh, emotes. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, that's a cool one. <laughs> Loki, Loki is my my favorite out of the two. Wait, that's the low key. Oh, oh yeah, there's a low key. It just looks different because like the. Who might? Uh, who's that? That's my boyfriend. Oh, oh, hi boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> they said hi. Uh... All right. All right. So, all right. Off the topic. All right. So back on track. On track. Um, be, um, Supa, what is your favorite shiny and why? Is it Toxel or is it something else? Favorite shiny. That's so hard. I like so many. You know, I don't like when you're given multiple options, and the fact that there's over a thousand Pokemon, and you know that there's so many, like Pokemon that have cool designs. Um, I am a bit biased. Yes, Toxtricity and Toxer are like one of my top favorites. Um, I would prefer the Loki shiny. I think compared to the all three. Mm -hmm. Um. But I also love shiny Quagsire. I feel like the the pinkish color to it gives it more of a derpy feel, and I love Quag because it's just like I want I want a Quag in person, and if you can't have one in person, I want a big like fluffy um version of it that's like a a stuffed animal or something, and just hold it, you know. Like I just love shiny Quag. Um, and then I would say, like, my third favorite would be the Rog and Rolla line. I think it's so cool that Gen 5 had, like, really cool... I've never played Gen 5, but um, they all had, like, really cool reactiveness. Like, anytime they were... Um, what is it? Their attack animations or something, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool about them. And I love that the little rock parts on the shiny of um, Gigalith and stuff light up. I think it's super cool. Because, one, I'm a big fan of rocks. Um, I almost went to school for uh, geology, so yeah, I, I think that those are the top three shinies that I love. Understandable. I like shiny Gigalith too. It's in my top ten favorites. It's so good. Ugh, but um, despite my love for Obstagoon, it's not my favorite shiny. What is my favorite shiny is a Pokemon that it, that was introduced in Gen Six, and it contains all of my favorite colors: black, red, gray, and blue. And that Pokemon is and will always be. Shiny Greninja. Oh, that's such a good shiny. I didn't even yeah. know what that shiny looked like until uh, what was it? I think it was a Smash Bros game or something, and I was like, "Whoa, what is it? What is this?" And my brother had told me like, "Oh, that's a shiny." And I was like, "Oh, I don't even know what that means." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shiny. Uh, uh, Greninja is my second favorite Pokemon of all time. So, um, it's shiny is definitely my top tier favorite. I mean, heck, I nearly choked. Um, trying to find this thing. I think you've seen that clip before. Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, that was choking a good on. One. I f I got the shiny early, but I failed big time on the reaction. But uh, if if Greninja was not as epic as it would be, it would probably still be Rayquaza because I am a Gen three baby, and shiny Rayquaza is top tier, no contest shiny. I you yeah. like if you do not like shiny Rayquaza, then um. Uh, there is something definitely wrong with you because black shinies are the king of shinies. I love shiny Rayquaza. I've been, I'm actually currently hunting that now for Dynamax Adventures, and I faced so many times. Um, I actually have a running thing that a lot of people know. I I call it black seaweed. Uh, just be or no burnt seaweed. Uh, the only reason why is because it's a it's a a reference to Madagascar. And then when they're stuck on the island, the penguins help them, yeah. and it's like seaweed on a stick. So it curls up. It curls yeah. up, and it's shiny as black, so burnt seaweed Yeah, I, I know. Stick. Yeah, I know. I've seen <laughs> that scene before. 
Uh, yeah, that was a funny movie. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Supa, out of all the Pokemon types to exist, which one would you say is your favorite? Uh, I'm a big electric fan. Electric and dark. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've always loved electricity, lightning, all that kind of stuff. And just, like, even when I sign my name, my real name, um, my S is actually derived or themed based off of a lightning bolt. So I just kind of go like this. Um oh. So I just, I've always just loved, like, electricity, lightning, all that kind of stuff. I always said, like, if I would have a cool superpower, it'd be some type of, like, electricity-themed power. Well, if you lightning. like Zeb's, well, if you like Zeb Strika, it's in the, the Indigo Disc DLC, so you may want to get on the, you may want to get on the train of finishing the game so you can actually go shiny hunt it. That is one of my favorite Pokemon. I love an electric zebra. Like, how can you not like an electric zebra? It's so cool. You sound, so, just, yeah. you, you sound just like him in JTV. You sound just like him. <laughs> I mean, I already got my shiny Blitzel, so I'm good to go. I, I wish the shiny was better for it, not gonna lie. But I do love, I do love uh, Zeb Striker and Blitzel. It's so good. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're cool guys. But... Also, it comes as no surprise, my favorite typing is the dark type, because um, I am a dark type prodigy. I've near, I've used the dark type of pretty much nearly every playthrough team I have ever done. Um, let's see, why am I loving dark type so much? Um, as I've said multiple times, I have a pretty dark past, and I've been to hell and back multiple times that I can count. So I kind of feel at home with dark type Pokemon, because they always get a bad rep because of their either appearance or their experiences. So they just, uh, but they're, you know, they're, they're kind at heart because like, like in all honesty, whenever I go out in public, I kind of don't like, um, I kind of like always have this like pissed off demeanor looking face and it's nothing that I'm doing on purposely. It's just the way that my face is like scrunched over the years. So Right. Plus, I'm not really like public oriented unless I'm out with uh, people that I that I know and I care about. So it's like um, I can't really put like my softer expression on. But um, um, yeah, like all like my my top five favorite Pokemon are also Dark types. I mean, I got I mean I got Obstagoon, I got Greninja, I got Darkrai, I got Hydreigon, I got Umbreon. And, like, there's so many good Dark types out there, and they're so well designed. They're such powerhouses when you set them up right. I mean, it's just there's just something always good about a dark type. Plus, on top of that, the only reason dark type exists was the nerf to psychic type in Generation One. So I'm uh, I gotta give kudos to the psychic type and the Pokemon developers for screwing up. Because without I've their always... screw, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was say I just always like dark Pokemon or dark type Pokemon because I think they looked cool and I love their animations. That was the only reason for me. They're always good. They're always good Pokemon. <sighs> but they have definitely given me a fair share of strife over the years. Yeah. <sighs> but that's not what this show's about. We're here for the good times. All right. So, Supa, out of all the Pokemon games you've ever played, which one would you say is your favorite? This can include the main series and the spinoff games, but if you want to pick um, one from each category, main series and spinoff, you can. So, what's well, what's what's your favorite? I haven't played a lot. Uh, spinoffs would be, like, fan-made games? Uh, spinoffs would be, like, um, um, the mobile games, Unite, XD, Coliseum, stuff like that. Ah, gotcha, okay. Um, my favorite game... I love the story of Gen 7, and I, I that'll always be my favorite just because that was the first game that really got me invested in Pokemon, and just, like, I wasn't allowed to play Pokemon when I was younger. So in 2016, when I had got um, a more stable job, I had the money to get a game, and my brother was like, did you see there's going to be a new Pokemon game? It's based in Hawaii. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And I thought that was so cool because I am part Hawaiian. I was going to Hawaii often, like about almost once a year or every other year. <laughs> and it's just something that was just a big part of my life. So I picked up the game. I played the heck out of it. Loved it. And I've loved Pokemon since that game. Um, but I, in terms of like the game that I have the most hours put in and I absolutely treasure is Pokemon Sword. I can't say Shield because I... I have shield, but I haven't put a lot of many hours in it, and I absolutely just love sword because Doggo was sword. 
So <laughs> um, those two are my favorite games. I, in terms of spinoffs, I used to really love Pokemon Go, but there was just so many changes that were made to it that I don't really, I don't really care for it anymore. And they don't like to listen to their community, unfortunately. No. So yeah, uh, those are the two favorite games for me. I haven't played every single game so far. I would like to uh, finish. What is it Pokemon Alpha Sapphire? Um, but I haven't had time to finish that story just because I'm stuck on a hunt with one of my my other games. Yes, so. we know. We'll get to, we'll get to that later on. <laughs> but um, when I talk about my favorite Pokemon games, um, I can't like derive it between one specific game. I have to derive divide between three separate games because I have three unique characteristics that I prefer of of a Pokemon game. I have a favorite game based on the storyline. I got a favorite game based on the Pokédex of said game. And I also got my favorite based on my overall experience with the game in, in general. So storyline-wise, the Gen 5 games take the cake for the best written storylines of any main series in any regular series Pokemon game. Actually, XD and uh, Coliseum may be a contender, but... Anyway, in terms of the main series, Black Two, White Two, Black and White, they have they have my uh, they have my respect and gratitude, especially uh, especially J uh, Black Two, White Two, because in my opinion, who is the best written rival of any main series Pokemon game? Because he's not out there trying to conquer the world or become the greatest trainer in the world. He's out there trying to rescue his baby sister's kitty. So I'm uh, yeah, I have mad respect for that man. I have never played Gen Five. I really want to. I have a copy of Black. Um, I want to do a starter hunt on that one, but out of if I was to go based off of decks, knowing like what all the Pokemon look like, I absolutely love Gen Five Pokemon, but I have yet to play the game, so I can't I can't say for the story. I recommend you give them a play; they're really good games. But in terms of the Poke the Pokedex of a game, my favorite is Platinum because there's a lot of Gen Four Pokemon that I absolutely adore, and you can make um either. Even you can make even a crappy Gen Four team, and it was still Rock House. I mean, I mean, heck, you can put a, I mean, you can put freaking Weavile and Garchomp on your team in Platinum. It's just like, it's just like, it's oh, it's so amazing. It's so an amazing team. <sighs> Plus, uh, I just love the, I love the legendary uh, quartet that the, that we got. I mean, Dialga, Palkia, Garatina, Arceus, they're all so amazing Pokemon. On top of that. But in terms of my overall experience of the game, I have to give it to the OG uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver because that was my very first experience in Johto because I never played the uh, the original Heart uh, uh, Gold Silver and Crystal before the Virtual Console, so it was my first Gen Two experience and it was a very enjoyable, lovable experience. I mean, your Pokemon following you, sixteen badges. I mean, facing off against Red. I mean, it's just it's such great such great experience i mean don't, don't get me wrong i am a gen 3 baby i got mad respect for the games but there's always you know something wrong with it because i, I mean i'm just i mean i'm just like um what's the word i'm looking for i know i'm just uh going with the crowd but too much water too much water gen 3 has too much water the the, the home region is like 70 there's like 70 percent water oh okay okay there's, I had I no mean, idea. You, I mean, you take you. I mean, you get a good chunk of the land, but then the second the second you get your your six badge, you have to go to the sea. <laughs> Ugh, I don't like water. Let's just say I don't like vast bodies of water that contain a crap ton of tentacle. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to the tentacle. I mean, that's one. That's that's basically where my f emote came from. Like, I have a. Um, let's see if I. I don't know if you've I mean, seen it. Yeah, I mean, we'll see it later. We'll see it later in the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll see it later in the show no matter what. But um, now it's time to go from love to hate. So let's, well, I'm going to say this. Loki, bless his heart, he really couldn't answer these questions because he has a massive, massive love for Pokemon that I cannot succumb. But I'm praying that you have some hatred in your heart. Or some I, things Pokemon relies. Is is it po hating hatred for Pokemon like specific Pokemon? Um. All right. So the same four categories that we just discussed, we're going to discuss them in the hatred categories. So, okay. what is your least favorite Pokemon and why? Jinx. <laughs> She's so annoying. I absolutely hate Jinx. 
I I don't I hate the way that she looks. I don't like the shiny. Doesn't even make it any better. She's annoying the way that she sounds and her cry. When I was hunting for when I was hunting for Cryagonal, she wouldn't shut up. Like that's I wish I could just turn off her cry. She pissed me off so much. And anytime someone else is hunting her or I hear her, whether it's Pokemon Go, I, I feel like I, I'm given flashbacks and it's like a traumatizing, like, turn it off! Get Jinx out of here! I absolutely hate Jinx. She's annoying. Worst Pokemon ever to be created. Should not exist. What even is she? I have no idea. And I, I feel like Smoochum, Smoochum is like just a... I feel like that's the squish toy version of her. Like, you just want to squeeze. It's like one of those things that the eyes pop out. I don't know. It's so dumb. I <laughs> absolutely hate them. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Finally, a good hatred story. <laughs> I've been missing one of those. I've been missing one of those like crazy. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to, to, to fulfill that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but sadly, your hatred will never succumb to mine. <laughs> I, I will, I'm interested. My least favorite Pokemon is Alolan Persian. Ooh, why? A variety of reasons. Design, just like you said, Jinx. It is yeah, like I hate it more than Jinx. It is to me, it is the most disgusting abomination to ever grace the screens of Pokemon in history. It's so it's so horrifically ugly to me that every time I see it, I literally just want to gag because it just it's just so bad for me. And here's <laughs> here's the biggest slap in the face for me because I am a dark type prodigy. The before Piers and Marnie were a thing, the closest thing we ever got to a dark type gym leader was Nanu, the Kahuna of Ula Ula Island, and. I like the character, but he has that stupid punt to the sun, never to seen, never to be seen again. Cat as his ace. I remember that. That makes it's, sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all. It's no, 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 so I mean, stupid. No, I'm saying it makes sense on why you hate that Pokemon now. Yeah, I mean, in the Ultra Games, he could have used an Alolan Muck, and that would have been fine. It would have made the battle a lot harder, because that thing's only weak to ground. But then, all of a sudden, this stupid cat comes in the, into the fray. It's like, why does this guy have this cat? Why does he have this cat? It's so... It does not match him at all. I mean, Muck doesn't either, but I get there's a surplus of Dark Types in, in Gen 7, but come the fuck on! You have to torment me? I'm just glad they freaking made up with it with Piers and Marnie because they gave them two bomb ass um, dark type aces. But the stupid cat. But then, then Shrix decided to make me shiny hunt that little fucker. And I mean, I suffered for four hours, and 192 eggs later, shiny uh, Galarian Meowth that went instantly into his copy because that thing was a toxic virus that I did not want in my file. <laughs> Uh, you're like, fine, I'll hunt it for you, but you get to keep it. I don't want uh, it. Technically, he paid for it, so I was going to give it to him no matter what. Oh, okay. He paid 100,000 channel points for it. Oh, I think I got blurry for a second. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're blurred. Give it a minute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I turn off my autofocus because I like to make my camera more real-time. I don't know how to turn off autofocus, unfortunately. Like, um, I like in my OBS, I click on the settings thing for my camera and it brings up this and then it says configure video. There's a whole settings list I can do. Oh, like, yeah. Like I, like I turn off saturation, sharpness. No, I turn off sat. I think I turn off saturation, sharpness, my camera control, focus and exposure. And then I turn my gain all the way up to 255 and then bam, I turn yeah. and then I, I select it. Then I deactivate and reactivate my camera. And that's how this becomes this. Yeah, I don't know if Discord has turn off. Yeah, it's at, at something OBS does. I don't think Discord has those settings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, all right. So, out of all the shiny Pokemon that ever existed, which one do you hate the most? Shiny Pokemon, Iggly Buff, so dumb, so <laughs> That's dumb. The 
That's the second time in t- in the past three episodes we've had somebody say equally buff. <laughs> Sorry. I, okay. I, the reason why is because I, I mean, there's other shiny Pokemon that I I hate, but that's always one of the first ones that comes up because I remember Beefy hunting it, and then the fact that he saw the shiny and noticed it, I'm like, how? It looks the same. I you have like superhuman eyes or something because. I just remember, like, I have no idea how you're going to see this. And then he saw it, and I'm like, no, there's no change. He's like, yeah, there's a change. You can see that it's, like, slightly different. And I'm like, I don't know exactly what he said because I can't remember. But I was like, yeah, no, there's no no difference. I cannot tell. And I honestly, if overall, like, if there's any Pokemon that doesn't experience a lot of of change, um, I don't like their shiny. Any Pokemon that doesn't have a change is, I think, super dumb to me. It's And it sucks because for those who are... It, it's not user-friendly for those who are disabled, like, um, are visually impaired. Because it's, mm-hmm. if they can't if they can't see sparkles or whatever, like, it's not fair to them because th- they already have a difficult time seeing it. And I think it's completely unfair. So any Pokemon that just doesn't have that change or significant change, I, I don't like it. Yeah, which brings up a fair point for Scarlet and Violet. I mean, for shiny hunters that are visually impaired, I mean, that pretty much sets, that means pretty much makes them like almost in near impossible to properly shiny hunt because they can't identify the difference in the Pokemon. Because for those that are actually like full, full colorblind, they can only see black and gray. Like, unless you can contrast the, sh- the, the grays and the grays and whites between the shinies, I mean, you have to rely on the shiny sparkles, but the shiny sparkles are no longer there until you encounter the Pokemon. Right, exactly, and that's I, that's one reason why I, I also kind of got annoyed of Gen Nine, and I I got unmotivated to play the game. It's just because they're not; it's not very user friendly for um, anybody that is either visually or audibly disabled. Um, because some people who um, I I remember seeing there was one person on YouTube that I watched who was visually impaired shiny hunter and they look forward to hearing the sounds and now that if you get that taken away like they can't hunt and then for those the, the ones that can see very that, that are legally blind and can barely see or barely vaguely see um it's very hard for those things to be noticed and they also have to rely on that and then for those who are deaf right or hard of hearing if they don't hear sparkles, then you have them like, well, I can't tell if this is shiny, and you don't know if it's sparkled or not because they didn't hear it. So, yeah, that's yeah. one reason why I also just kind of got unmotivated to play Gen 9 as well. There's just so many things that I just didn't agree with. But, I mean, eventually, like I said, I will play through it. It's just that I don't think I could ever put it on the top three for me. I know people say that the story is really good, but... I mean, I can't put in, I can't I can't put it in top three for me either. I mean, if it wasn't as buggy as it was, it'd probably be a lot higher on my list. But because of all the bugs that are still exist, even with all the DLC updates, um, uh, it's still ranking lower on my list. But actually, my least favorite Pokemon is a Gen Nine shiny. It was Regice, but then they really dropped the ball with these shinies. Um, Charcadet, Armorers, and Cerulege, because they're all the same thing. The only yeah. thing that changes. The only thing that changes is the color of their eyes. I forgot about that. I, I didn't even know until someone told me. That's a good one to to hate. Literally, this is the only difference. Take Literally, this is the shiny version of me. This is the regular me. Regular me, shiny me. Regular me, That's so shiny me. Dumb. I know. I've, I keep saying this every single podcast. Every single one. All they had to do was make Charcadet a burnt out charcoal gray color and then swap the color schemes of Armors and Cerulege and they would have been some of the best designed shinies in the world, especially uh, Cerulege because those those red and orange flames would have made a great sword. Yeah. It's a super cool looking Pokemon and it's a complete missed opportunity. Yeah, like I, I also keep saying this every show, like whoever whoever was responsible for not only designing these shinies but approving these shinies and also putting the shinies in the game, all those people connected need to be fired from Game Freak. I do not, I don't, I don't care. They, they dropped the ball on some of the best designed Pokemon in the world and we need justice. Unless like the Pokemon, 
company actually said like no let's torture the the shiny hunters and not give them what they want or just come up with a stupid design well i don't know like go ahead well, technically, shiny hunters are being tortured right now because mini ore is in the DLC in the Indigo disc, and you know you can't see it shiny unless you actually interact with it. Oh no, that sucks. Or you Masuda it, which I might wind up doing. Just a little spoiler for things to come. I feel like for me, because um, I don't always see or hear things either, because as I am hard hearing myself, like. Uh, when it comes down to hunts that are just, like, not noticeable, I tend to go to Masuda. I'm not a big Masuda fan, honestly. I don't really care for it, but there if a, it's a hard... Like, there is a reason I'm called the Masuda King of Sword and Shield. Go ahead, explain. Because nearly every Masuda that I've ever claimed on stream in Sword and Shield, I've gotten within the first 300 eggs. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the answer. And you proved yourself, especially... Especially in last year's Team Yell Shiny Hunting Tournament, and I even it happened again this year, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, the 2A Bulbasaur and then the 30 egg, the 30 egg, uh, Litten. Yep. Goddamn, so Scarlet and Violet for getting rid of my getting rid of my shiny luck. Goddamn it, Sog. <laughs> uh, all right, but we're, we're getting off, we're getting off topic, but what were you, what were you about to say? I don't remember. <laughs> <That's your opinion. laughs> you said you were talking about how you don't like Masuda or. Mm, oh, I was saying uh, I do Masuda only for those that I, if I know that I can't hunt it a specific way, or I can't tell the difference with its shiny because I don't want to miss it, and I I tend. Like, Beefy knows this, maybe a few other people know this as well. Like, sometimes I, I get distracted, and I don't see the shiny Pokemon, so I have to go look in the box to see if anything is shiny. So, like, they also use that as well. So, like, doing Masuda as a backup yeah, way of, like, making sure I didn't miss the shiny. I mean, that, I mean, I usually go stick with Masuda and Sword and Shield because that's where most of my shiny luck goes. If I do a Masuda hunt in SV, I absolutely hate it. I hate pre-collecting all those eggs. I hate it so much. I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, hatch the first box of eggs. Then the shiny's there, and then I have to hatch all the other ones just to see if they were shiny or not. It's just a giant waste of time for me. Yeah. That's why I, I like Masuda hunting a sword and shield, because I can collect ten eggs in a row, and then if a shiny pops up in one batch, I only have, like, maybe at least ten or twelve leftovers. Not, like five boxes full of leftovers <laughs> yeah but anyway i like i like masuda uh, masuda method in in uh gen 8 i i haven't really tried it in any other game to be honest though yeah i haven't i think i did maybe a few masuda hunts in uh sun and moon but uh those didn't go well but anyway um which Pokemon type has either given you the most trouble or you just downright despise? Um, I, I feel, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm not a big psychic fan. I feel like, isn't there a lot of legendaries too that are psychic or have a lot yeah. of psychic stuff? Yeah, I'm just never yeah, really the... been a big psychic fan. Let's see, we had psychic legendaries in Gen's, let's see, in Gen's 1... Two, uh, four, seven, uh, five, six. Wait, wait, six. Uh, no, there wasn't any psychic. Oh wait, no, yeah, there was. Five, six. Uh, oh wait, we had we we have a psychic mythical and uh we've had a psychic mythical or a legendary in almost pretty much every game. Gens one, two, three, four, five, six seven would they were all psychic except for the the tapus seven um eight let's see eight um actually eight is the uh, eight's an outlier and gen nine um that's also one so so yeah every generation between one and seven has a psychic legendary or mythical see it's not as exciting and i feel i don't know it's just oversaturated i think psychic has always been my least favorite um there 
not gonna lie like in tcg when i play like there are some good psychic build decks but i just don't really care to play it like because of my semi hate for psychic um it i don't like to play the decks if i if i if i don't have to um i i would say it's either that and No, I'm just gonna leave with I'm gonna I'm gonna go with just psychic Pokemon. That's my my least favorite type for now. All right, hold on. BVS BV one has a question. Uh, favorite gimmick: Mega D Max G Max Terra or Z moves. Ooh, um, Megas look cool. I haven't experienced a lot with Megas though. I do like Dynamax and G Max. Um. Terra, eh, I love Z moves. Z moves, I think was really cool. I think out of all of them, I'm I'm really gonna go with either D Max, G Max, and Z moves. Z moves is super memorable for me just because that um it was my first game for Gen Seven and I absolutely loved. It. I was like, oh, this is so cool. The fact that they're doing all these different moves, um, for their Pokemon. But I do love the big drastic transformation for most of the Pokemon for D Max slash G Max. So I, I gotta agree yeah. with you on the D Max uh, front. It's probably my favorite gimmick. Um, I would have said Mega Evolution, but it's just a rip job. It's just a rip off Digimon. It's just a rip off Digimon. That's a good way of putting it. The power boosts are cool, but it's just a rip off of Digimon. So yeah, I'd have to agree with Dynamaxing. So it's a cool feature. All right, so my least favorite type is um, the fairy type. Mm. It's been that way pretty much since the day it got introduced because um, fairy types added a new weakness to dark. It made dark, uh, made dark dragon types the bitch of all fairy type Pokemon. It gave a weakness to spirit tomb. And let's see. Um, uh, we got another hydrate. I've been hydrating all day. Uh, let's see, um, let's see. The second fairy type we got introduced, they gave it a gym in Valorate in X and Y. Although, even though we got two Dark Type Elite 4 members between Sydney and Karen, we did not get a gym until Generation fucking 8. And, uh... Jeez, uh, sorry, my head a little itchy. Um, I will say there are six fairy type Pokemon that I actually do like. It's, um... Gardevoir, Togekiss, Mimikyu, Alolan Ninetales, Grimmsnarl, and S Sylveon. Those six fairy types I can stand. All the other fairy types are pff, gone out the window. But even though I have written recently, even though I have been informed that Gramble should be a fairy type, it shouldn't be because it's technically classified as the fairy Pokemon. But it did not need the fairy typing at all. It does not resemble a fairy at all. Nothing about that thing says, Hi, I'm a cute little fairy. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised that Grand Bull was a fairy too when I first learned. I was like, what? That doesn't seem like a fairy type Pokemon, uh, but okay. No, it makes no sense whatsoever. It still makes no sense. Is that your cat? Yeah, he's got the cone of shame on. Oh. Uh. <sighs> But yeah, fairy types go away. Except for the one six that I like. They can stay, all the others can go away. I I like fairy types, but I I wish there was I don't know. I feel like there's not that many. Like f fairy type it, it's very minimal, I guess, from what I see. And it's funny because they had it in TCG and they took it out, and I feel like you you made fairy types a thing, but there's not enough of it, and then because there's not enough of it, you took its cards away. I don't know if that's the reason behind it, but that's how it feels. <laughs> I didn't know they made fairy for the TCG. Yeah. They took it away, I think, last year, when I think they started changing out the rotation for specific cards. Like It was, it was right around, or right before Gen 9 came out, I think. I don't... I don't know if that's true or not because I've never seen any fairy cards in like the uh, Gen Eight uh, TCGs that uh, ETBs that I've opened. 
I think it, it they stopped um they stopped producing fairy part way through Gen eight. Uh, I know fairy still existed. I believe with like shining fates and stuff. I'm not exactly sure when it got taken out, but yeah. Interesting. They're, they're, I think I feel like their their decks too. I haven't gone up a lot of like fairy decks in TCG. I don't know really know how good they are. I'm sure someone has a really good build for one, but I've never tried it out myself, so can't say really. Let's see. Uh, all right so uh out of all the pokemon games you have played which one do you not want to play again which one do you hate the most uh, well does it include ones that i haven't even finished <laughs> it can include any game you have slightly even touched scarlet violet <laughs> yes i'm really not motivated to play it i like I know I need to play it because I bought the game. I just really don't want to play it. Like I, it's come to a point where I just I feel like I want to pay someone just to play it so I can just shiny hunt on there. But I feel like that would just make it harder for me to shiny hunt because I'm not knowing of where I need to go. Um, but yeah, I just not super motivated with that one. I haven't played every single Pokemon game, but I. I wouldn't really want to do Let's Go Pikachu Eevee again either. I I like shiny hunting in it, but this I don't know, just to play it and run it run through it and speed run it or whatever, like it's just kind of boring to me and I I understand it's like a it's a remake and all that, but I don't know. It it was fun. I love shiny hunting it. it it's where I got my first shiny hunting experience um because of Beefy and my friend Coolfire. Um but I don't know. I like. I have. I my goal is to get Let's Go Pikachu. I have the Eevee one, and just thinking about how I have to go through that entire story again, I don't want to do it, but I'm gonna have to do it. So those are that's that's my two answers for that. What about you? <laughs> um, X and Y. Oh really? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love I love the dark. I I I do have love for certain Pokemon that I introduced in that generation. It's just that the games were just. I mean, the games are just so incomplete. I get that they were trying... I get that this is their first ever 3D Pokemon game, but they could have just done so much more with the game. They could have done so much mm -hmm. more. It just felt it was always lacking something. I mean, yes, Megas were a thing, but then they didn't give anybody Megas outside of, like, three major characters, and it just it was just a pain in the ass. It's so easy. I cleared the entire game with just my Froakie than slash Greninja. I mean, don't get me wrong, Greninja's an amazing Pokemon, but I cleared the entire game with only a Greninja. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I beat every single Pokemon trainer and the game and the Elite Four and the champion with only my Greninja left stand, with only my Greninja. Wow. And it wasn't even fully, it wasn't even fully EV, it was, I mean, it was fully EV trained, but it was not full, it was not fully leveled up. It was only like maybe level 80 or like level 85 by the time I reach Diantha. Which is also a reason I hate X and Y because fuck you Diantha, you are not a real champion. You are the laughing you are a laughing stock of champions in Pokemon history cuz everyone says Gita's the worst cuz of her team. That's not her fault. That's the developer's fault. Gita's in her fucking game. Gita's in her game. She's actually a overwhelming presence in Gen 9. Diantha, you literally only talk to her five times in the entire game you play, unless you never go uh, face her again for a rematch. Five times. That's all you see this woman. Forget her. And don't give me, and like, people give me crap saying like, oh, Wallace was never in the, in the, in the game, and he's the, he's the champion Emerald. Well, we all knew who Wallace was, not this weird old bitch. I, I, I have a renouncing disdain for for diantha and i apologize for my for my tongue but i just do not like this woman like she makes I... like she like if cynthia was not so badass she'd make cynthia look bad dang <laughs> like if cynthia was not the overwhelming presence that she is she would look make cynthia look bad i i i've not been able to get through the story unfortunately with x and y <laughs> 
So I can't relate, but maybe I'll I'll see it once I finally am able to go through the story. Yeah, don't. Yeah, you you can get through the game. It's it's like I said, it's super easy. My sister cleared through the entire game with a Delphox, a Blastoise, Eveltal, and three Furfrus. Three. Yeah, she used three Furfrus on her team. I, I let her borrow my X and Y. Co I let her borrow my copy of Y, and that was the team she brought back to me. Wow. Yeah, that was a cr that was a cr that was a like. Uh, I have to I have to look up the vod, but I've recorded the entire thing for a for a vod. It's somewhere in my in my vod list. Would you say that that game was probably made to be user friendly for those who are new to Pokemon? Oh yeah, no problem. I mean, it's hand holding. Gotcha. To the extreme. <sighs> All right. So, so do you have a do you have a first experience regarding Pokemon that was in your younger years, or was like your most like relevant ex like your first thing that comes to mind when you think of Pokemon is like that ha the thing that happened between like the Sun and Moon days? So like, what is like the earliest memory you got when it comes to Pokemon? My earliest memory is actually, um, I would wake up as a kid, I'm the oldest of, of my brothers, and I would wake up super early, I would wake up like at 5 o'clock in the morning, and my dad, he didn't like that I would wake them up in, super early, like at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning on the weekends, and I remember going in there because my mom gets scared easily when she's asleep. So I'd go in there and she'd jolt the bed and my dad'd be awake and my mom'd be like, I told you to leave the remote controller on the on the table so that way she doesn't bother us. And I would do that every morning. If I couldn't find the remote, um, I would go bother them because I wanted to watch Pokemon. And that the time it was the uh Indigo League and I just absolutely loved pokemon watching it and i just love the show i had no idea really what was going on but i just love the show and uh at the time when i was like in daycare and stuff like during the summer kids would be allowed to bring like video games or cards and all that kind of stuff whatever they wanted and people had like the pokemon cards and the games that they were playing on their game boy color and all that and I was like, I want to play that, but my, I was never allowed to. And then I was like, okay, well, I want to learn how to play the card game because I saw that, you know, people would get those paper mats and they would actually play the game. And I was like, I want to learn how to play that too. And everyone would tell me no because I was a girl. And that kind of demotivated me from, like, playing Pokemon or learning anything about it. So around that time, like, as I got a little older, I just kind of stopped watching Pokemon and kind of, like, lost interest and went over to Digimon. Um... Uh, because not many people knew about Digimon. And so I was like, all right, well, if I can't like Pokemon, then I'll like Digimon. So that's like my super earliest memory is like basically to go back of like where it all started. Let's see. What about you? It's similar for me because um, I did start watching the anime when I was a kid. I mean, I think like my very first time watching pokemon was the was a three disc as uh, a three episode vgc uh set with the uh pokemon shipwreck the isle of the giant pokemon and tentacool and tentacruel which yeah. fun fact is now a banned episode in the united states oh which ban tentacool and tentacruel it's it's banned in the us now because of the tentacruel destroying the towers Oh. Yeah, we're not going to talk more about that, but I had no idea. Yeah, I bring it up I I bring it up nearly every time I do it and they're like, "Huh, really?" Uh, everyone doesn't know. But anyway. Um after that, I got introduced to the card game. I mean, I like the way the cards look and everything, and they're so cool, but uh, I never really favored interest in playing it because I, even still to this day, as a 27-year-old man, I have no idea how to play the game, and I probably never will. I'll never understand how to play it. But after that, a few years down the line, I actually got a hold and played my first ever Pokemon game, which was Sapphire. I didn't actually start start it and finish it, but um, I just started KOing the Pokemon left and right, and I just like really loved that you can capture these creatures, make them fight other creatures, and then just you know just win money. It's like oh cool. Um, I think from start to finish, the first Pokemon game that I played was Leaf Green. So, 
that's just my short smum history of Pokemon. Like between the ages of like um between the ages of five and ten, that's pretty much how my journey went, and that's pretty much why I've been a Poke nerd ever since. Leaf Green is a really fun game, or a good game at least. Yeah, that's where I found my first shiny ever. Which one was it? Shiny Hop Up. Oh, quite fitting. Nice. Yeah, quite fitting. Green shiny in the green game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up is what we were talking about earlier um, regarding your emotes. This is now the emote elaboration. So go ahead and post ah. some of your emotes in the chat and give us the backstory as to why some of them are there. And uh, if, if, if possible, who created them. Um, while you're doing that, um, Ramal would be on professionally for a sec. I need to go grab some more ice. Sounds good. I'll go ahead and grab some emotes here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the same one. Uh, here. And here. I'm not sure how many I am supposed to put. Uh, as many as you want. Okay. Post as many as possible. I have so many emotes. All right. Number one, number one you got there based on Pokemon. Based on Pokemon. Okay. That one out. Note to self, make more ice. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. I need to grab more ice. <sighs> <laughs> oh man, these are gonna that's be also the some funny stories. Yeah, that's also the first time I ever walked off on a podcast, so <sighs> curse my sickness. Layer and I'll do one more. All right. I picked and those there's ones. the emote wall. Well, what the? Okay, here's a lot of questions I got. <laughs> All right, so explain. Just explain some of these. All right. Do you, is there one that you want me to explain first? No, nah, just uh, just go ahead and explain. Just explain, right. like, just explain some of them. Or all of okay. them if you want. So the F tentacle uh, is because when I was shiny hunting in Let's Go Eevee just on my own, or as, once I got my shiny Trico um, on alpha sapphire and i was just trying to do fishing hunts for the very first time it every single freaking shiny was shiny tentacle and it pissed me off i was like i am trying to get something else other than this pokemon and so i i had to make this emote this emote um resembles like literally every f moment for me so uh yeah, I I thought it was very suiting. Um going back to Shiny Quag earlier, absolutely love Shiny Quag. It's super derpy and it looks happy and I wanted to make some cool confetti like hype looking emo and I thought that was perfect for it. Um the chest bin, I don't know if you want to explain that story now, but it, it's one of my most uh sad well, and memorable hunts. So. We'll see it. We'll see it momentarily, but we'll we'll talk more yeah. about it in a minute. Uh, the sweat version of it is kind of like the nervous break because of maybe it happening again or maybe happening with other Pokemon. Uh, then you have it being dead for reasons to come. Uh, the Toxel with the heart, I just love Toxel. It's super cute, and I think the fact that you take the little angry baby looking Pokemon, making it happy, it looks it looks adorable. So I I needed it to look like that um the low-key toxicity is one of my favorites just because it's super chill laid back and 
like I get to see it as a tea drinker and I used to drink tea all the time on stream um, and had a, like a tea command and everything so I, I think I just love its vibe and I want to bring tea back onto my stream once our streaming room is done um, the Toxel taps so I really wanted a bongo or a tap emote like that and the the story about this one is actually because it Toxel is just like an angry baby and I feel like it's a menace to the uh, to toxicity forms. Like, it just wants to get into everything. And so it's actually tapping or banging on the G-Max uh, toxicity guitar. So it's, like, strumming and tapping and kind of just, like, playing around. So I thought it was adorable. The Soul Rock Lurk, uh, I thought... So Soul Rock actually pissed me off for a hunt. It was actually for Polydude's event. And it was like, uh, I don't remember what the event was called. I think it was a solstice hunt. And I had chose Soul Rock because I, I liked the shiny and I thought it was really cool to, to find the sun Pokemon as something that I would wanted to hunt. But everyone else found theirs super quick and I, I was left hunting it. It was just supposed to be a weekend event. It, I was left hunting it for like over a month or two and I finally found it and the, it's perfect emote like the, the, it's facial expression is perfect for a leak lurk emote because it like, looks like it's just squinting like I'm lurking you know so that's why I had that made uh the the Pachirisu that looks like what the heck am I looking at it, it's Parachismu um, it, it's a Pachirisu that has a pear on its head, an A on its forehead, eating a block of cheese, and has cow udders on itself. I drew that myself. <laughs> if I you just hover over the, it. I didn't even yeah, notice you gotta, those udders. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta hover over <laughs> it. It's actually just a joke because I think I was on a call. No, I was, I was hunting something and I was talking about like pat, shiny Pachirisu or knowing the Pokemon, I didn't really know how to pronounce it, and it came out as, like, Parachismu, and, uh, Beefy was like, what, hold on, he g called me on stream, and he was like, what did you call it? <laughs> hey, he's you, like, you... go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, it, I was like, Parachismu, so I named it Pachu what? Because <laughs> it's like, that's the, the story behind it. You think that's, you think that's terrible? I was on my phone, and I was typing in Discord, and the word Bellsprout auto-corrected to hemorrhoid. I can relate to something like that. Um, but that's not the only one. I was typing, to do, I was doing the same thing in Twitter, but it was Badoo. And Badoo auto-corrected to nudes. Oh! Okay, wait, I have I have a story with that one, alright? There was a YouTuber when I tried live streaming once on YouTube and I sent the raid and became friends with this other person. Um, I was telling him that I was hunting for Woobat at the time and me typing as I'm still looking for that dang Woobat, dang Woobat, autocorrected to dong Woobat. And so he had an emote made <laughs> if you can imagine i actually have that emote um because i had to resize it for him uh i don't i don't think i should put it on on stream or show it to you but i can send you a dm later of what it looks like but yeah Probably dong not. yeah dong woobat and it's it's on his youtube channel and all that stuff and his emotes that you could use and i'm like great my my autocorrect got turned into an emote i'm surprised that mine hasn't become an emote yet like I'm still, I got emotes, I got emotes planned, but I just got to pull the trigger on getting them made. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Going with the last three emotes, uh, Polly, the shiny Polly Toad. I love shiny Polly Toad. Um, I think it's such a cool looking shiny. Uh, you see everything like, you see the buff Diglett, buff Magikarp, all that kind of stuff, and I was yeah. like. You know, Polly to po po uh, shiny Polly to Polly. Oh my gosh, I can't Polly Toad. We're streamers. Talk. We can't speak English. Yeah, we can't English at all. Um, I was like, it's so like a flimsy looking frog, right? I was like, this since it has a cool shiny, why don't I make it look cool and buff? So it's it's flexing. Um, I have another version of that too that someone else made, but the, it was 
a little too tiny, so um, I wanted to make a better version of this one. Um, then the rigged one, I thought it was perfect because, uh, you know, Tox is already kind of angry looking, and shiny hunting, as you know, like, can be kind of crazy, and that's what this was made for. The rigged is also for PCG, um, so I thought it was a perfect emote to have that. And then the noted one, because sometimes, you know, streamers can can say things out of context. <laughs> so I was like, I need something that looks like a good noted emote. So I, I made the, the low-key one because I thought it would look perfect with the uh, the glasses and all. So gotcha. in terms of who made all my emotes, it's made by a variety of people. Um, most of my emotes right now are made by Modest for it. Uh, my original emotes were made by uh palita she i don't know if she's still doing commissions um the some of my emotes are made by my brother uh who's an artist as well but he doesn't have a lot of time right now as he's a school he's going to school for art mm -hmm. and then i have some emotes coming soon from mayo chicken i see yeah, I need to fill up some emotes and also make some animated ones, but that's going to come later, probably next year, because, you know, finances and whatnot. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right. These are my, these are the, poke, these are the emotes that are available on my channel between subs, bits, and just general use that are all based off of Pokemon. I love your emotes. They're great. All right, so most of these emotes are designed by either Video Game Shay or Sunny. Um, there are a few that were designed by a Fiverr designer who I cannot remember to this day. So I got um, I got Zorwa Giggle because um, there's always going to be funny moments. So you got to have at least some sort of giggle emote. So I went with the uh, I went with the regular old Zorwa and I made it shiny. It's based off of a GIF that was, uh, it's like, that was from the Zoroark movie. It's just, that okay. Zoroark just giggling and laughing. So, the High Dragon ban is supposed to be like ban hammers. But, um, uh, the problem is, the way Shay's art is, she can make anything that's menacing look cute. And this was supposed to be a menacing one, but unfortunately it came out a little bit too cute. Or a little bit cuter than I w than most people would probably like i mean i love it i love it a lot of people think it's cute but i like it. i like it i love it i always keep saying shay is one of the most amazing artists on on twit on, on twitch and on twitter and whatnot but she made blood moon ursa luna look cute really yeah i'm not even i'm not even kidding you go to her twitter page you scroll down you'll find a blood moon ursa luna that looks cute or she made it look cutesy i'm gonna have to look at that yeah yeah, like I said, she can make anything look cute. So, uh, obviously, because my main man is Obstagoon, I got a lot of uh, Obstagoon-themed emotes. So, I got just the traditional um, Obstagoon emote. I got Shiny Hype. I got Rage. I got Jammin'. And then I got my Tier 3 emote, which is one Shay made. It's with, um, I call it Obsta Peers, because it's Obstagoon and Peers fused together. If you look at look at it closely, you can see that it's like yeah. uh, as Pierce's cl uh, clothes and necklace and stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So I have uh, I have a high emo for Shiny Greninja. I just uh, I didn't really think of like what Pokemon I wanted at first for high, so I just went with Greninja. So just because it was my, my favorite Pokemon. Uh, Darkrai is my Lurk emo, based off of the fact that, you know, when Darkrai disappears, it goes into the shadows, so that's why his, like, his, like, face is cut off, um, that's at that point, and that's why, like, my, my Lurk emo is, thank you, uh, has been pulled into Darkrai's shadow. I like that. Uh, uh Reggie Drago is my Shiny Luck emote, for one reason only, it's because Shiny Reggie Drago is my very first on-screen Shiny. Oh, okay. Yeah, back when I didn't even have a proper um, brand and whatnot, um, that was my very first on-screen shiny. All right, so I have sh I have a shiny Zoroark as Pog for I think um, I think when I designed it, I just wanted like to match. I just wanted another, uh, or I think I just wanted a Zoroark emo because Zoroark was pretty cool and I just like it so much. I got Grim Snarl for a sus emo, but no one uses it. 
the the lantern emote is there because I did an electric only Nuzlocke in Shield, and mm. Sushi was a staple member until she unfortunately died. No. Yeah, it's she was. So good. I know she. I like. I gained newfound respect and love for Lantern based off of that run. It's not in my top ten yet. But if something happens and I somehow lose a lot of admiration for Nido King, it's gonna take take Nido King's spot. Okay. Ugh. Um, I got Dusk Ball as a D, at GG because you know once once you catch Pokemon, the ball sparkles. So GG's on catching a Pokemon. Okay. I got I got um, Umbreon as a blushing emo because you know blushing Umbreon I thought would look really cute, so that's why that's there. Super cute. I um, before too. I talk about the, this one, uh, I have a flex emote for people that have given me 25k bits at least, so they can use that whenever they want to flex the fact that they actually did that, or just like the flex in general. But my most used emote to this day is is the one that you can get if you give me a thousand bits. It's my baby demon heart emote. It's um, Galarian Zigzagoon biting onto a heart and holding it. Cute. I like that one too. Yeah, that one's uh, really good. But yeah, those are all my Pokemon themed emotes. I got other ones based not based off Pokemon. I got like, I got uh, two based off my cats, one based off my catchphrase, and of course I got third. But I also have an emote based off of uh based off of the goon my goon squad logo. Yeah. You little kitty. All right. So now is finally the time, the point in the show where we're gonna give our shelf, we're gonna give ourselves time to share our some of our most memorable Pokemon experiences. So bear with me for a minute as I have to set this up properly. Okay, here we go. So as per usual, we now uh, each guest brings three clips, and I bring three clips. So we're gonna look at these moments and see how cool they are. And again, Mod Squad, make sure you tell me if these clips seem on the low side in terms of volume, so I know if to adjust. I'll keep an eye on my mobile. All right, here's the first one she sent me, and it has something to do with shiny scythers. So let's take a look. So usually. Um, what happens is if I say, oh my gosh, we're going to be ending stream soon, yada, 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 whatever, the Switch is listening. It listens, but it has its days where it works and it doesn't. So, if you want a reminder, exclamation point recent to see how we got this guy. I said it, and we found the shiny, and it happened. So. Oh, you manifested the shiny timber? Yeah, it's happened a few times. <laughs> But this one was one of my most memorable ones for manifestations, so. I see. Kind of like Chloe with that frickin' 17-egg scraggy. Yo. Anyway. Oh no, we're gonna be ending stream soon. I wonder if I'll find the shiny. Wink. <laughs> Maybe. No way. Because I don't think the Switch knows, like... Oh my gosh, no, are you serious? Oh my god, I'm telling you guys, are you serious? Manifesting juggernaut over here. <laughs> you crazy woman. How'd you freaking yeah. do that? I, I don't know. It's it's happened quite a few times that way and it I think it started with um I don't think Timber I think Timber was like maybe the second one or third second or third one of me doing it that way. But after that I was doing it quite often and it would happen every now and then, so yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's watch the rest. I tell you, right. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot. I can't. I can't. Whoa, I just had like a minor heart attack right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Every time. <laughs> All right. That one's a good one. <laughs> and it looks like this one's about you escaping the briefcase. Yep. All right. Let's take a looky. This one's a little bit on the low side. I was going to buy a bunch of them in case anybody ever needed me to replace it. I'm currently going to be replacing my joysticks on my Joy-Cons. And I'm also going to be customizing the outside. Not on these ones, though. Because I like how I have the blue, black, and red on here. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! You didn't even notice it until you heard the sparkles. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. I get so distracted so easily. Um, did you ever encounter the uncatchable Starly when you did this? I did not. Lucky. All right. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, did, did I catch? Did I wait? I never scream, and this is the second time I've done that. I just heard the sparkles. <laughs> yeah, you screamed so loud that your mic cut out. Yeah, it did. I was. I'm glad it did cut out, though, to be honest. But that, what? That's the the thing that I'm currently stuck on my shiny badge quest. I'm currently stuck on my sixth Pokemon, and that's the one that's giving me the hardest. I've and it's the only one right now too that I'm over odds with, and that's for Badoo and Rosalia, and everything else has been under odds. Let me see. All right, so this is the clip that. Like, even if you didn't bring this clip, I would have brought it anyway. So this is the one thing that Supa is the most known for. And as to why the as to why the chespin emotes exist. So I think it's just um appropriate that we just uh stay silent and watch for now. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh no! No! Oh my god! I just failed. I just failed. Chespin, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> you are surprisingly content with what just happened. If that was yeah. me, I would have jumped out of my chair, probably threw my chair across the room, and started growing crazy. So <laughs> kudos so kudos to you for keeping your cool, but <laughs> no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um <laughs> That's a that's just a prime example of never ever ever hit the buttons early. That's a prime example. Yeah. So and so Yeah, I was I was just so into just speed running it and it was it was second nature at that point. And at that time, I had tape on my L and R button, so because the rubber bands were just getting in the way, and so I had I had tape on that, and I was just so used to just putting the start button. I was like, ah, it's, it's this hunt's gonna go over odds anyways, right? So I was like, I'll just push the start button. And the fact that I even noticed it though is what hurt. And I the only reason why I laugh about it is because I I am true to my own mistake. You know, like I learn from it. And a lot of people were telling me, like, on Twitter and stuff, like, it happens to the best of us. It's going to happen at least once out of your shiny hunting career. And that this ends up being my hunt, and I'm currently still trying to reclaim it. Well, at least you're not Jacob Pomegranate, where you get it in literally less than 10 encounters, and you're not even paying attention, and you reset over it anyway. Yeah, I was close. That was close to uh, me, and I... That probably would have been ha happened to my Trico. I got Trico and Alpha Sapphire for 80, and it was there. I had just gotten, I think, raided by Sog Monkey, and it, uh, what was it? It was the it was, the shiny was just sitting there. I had no idea. I was just like saying hello to everybody, welcoming everybody into the raid, and I looked down and I was explaining that like what I was doing, and I looked down. I was like, wait, is that shiny? And it ended up being shiny. I didn't notice it for 11 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is also like a point of reference on me. I will not fail Shiny Darkrai. If I do, I quit. That's a proud declaration for me. If I fail, if I fail Shiny Darkrai, whether it's I, I'm just gonna master ball the damn thing if it pops up. But if I reset over Shiny Darkrai, I quit. If the freaking tweet, if if the reaction to Shiny Darkrai does not go viral, I will quit. The reason why I've never made a channel trailer is because I am still looking for this fucking dark ride. I, I, I'm also kind of in the same boat on my channel trailer. <laughs> it was like I'm trying to get big highlighted moments. And the fact that, like, I don't want the fail. I don't want the fail to be part of it. I want to find the shiny. I, I have an idea for it, but yeah, it's... I understand. I understand. So you, you would quit Pokemon in general or just shiny hunting in general? No, I would quit streaming in general what i'm not even like i'm not even i'm not even kidding 
Like, if I fail something I've been working on for nearly two fucking years, I'm I'm done. I'm so done. I'll probably quit for a good amount of time and then come back after I've finally cooled off. But I'll probably quit for a good amount of time. No, I mean, I get I get the break, but better not fail than... Yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like you, there's no way you'll fail. I think it's super noticeable, and I feel like you're Look. better at noticing... When I'm Go double ahead. hunting, and oh, whoops. when I'm double hunting, the only thing my eyes are glued on is that second is that second screen. Like I barely ever glance over to the second uh, side of my screen when I'm double hunting, because I'll see the sparkles of the shiny, whatever I'm hunting on that screen, but I have to pay close attention to that dark red. If I do not see any purple or pink, I have to reset. But yeah. But uh, here are my three clips that I brought. So this one is my most recently featured clip. It's uh, during the Radar Shiny Showdown, and I got the best possible luck you could possibly get with radar hunting. So here it is. Every four months. Full on Shiny Patch! Full on Shiny Patch! Full on Shiny Patch! Let's get it! What did I get? Shiny Shell Oss, I'll take it! Shiny Shell Oss, I'll take it! Fun fact, I was looking for a Shiny Hopip, but I wound up finding that. That's awesome. I like that clip. I wish I got to participate in that one, but I was like, oh my gosh, my last my last uh, Radar one was, was just pain. <laughs> I, d hey, I hate Radar hunting. I hate it with a passion, but yet I sucked in my pride and I went in with this anyway because I've been a sh I've been a part of the showdown since the underground showdown. Oh, okay. I've been, okay. In, I, I've been in nearly all of them. I was trying to do that too. Like I love the showdowns; they're great. Um, but the thing is, like as I got my job, um, I slowly started missing notifications for them, and so I would forget to register, or I just didn't know about them. Like I knew that they were coming, but the the registration wasn't there yet. So I would just forget, and I'm like, "Gosh dang!" And I forgot to, I forgot to remind myself to to register for the events. But yeah, yeah, that was one of them that I wanted to do. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still like, damn lucky, and I'm also very fortunate that Shine Patrol wanted to be on the show. So thank you again, Shine, for being the season two premiere guest. But anyway, guys, get the. I specific also I specifically wore that red shirt because I was on team repeat. Um I have not worn that shirt since. Clip, get the clip. Wait it looks until good. I catch it though. Wait until I catch it. Yeah, it's part of my new gimmick. Um when I look I'm trying to look the part of the top goon. I like it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I got more heat because I used a quick ball than anything. Based up, baby, I'm on the board! really why yeah because i was because it was team quick versus team repeat and i used oh. a quick ball to claim the shiny that's kind of funny though i like that <laughs> yeah. is that why you is that why you did it um i just did it because i just i didn't actually have a shell loss captured so i couldn't i prop i couldn't properly use a repeat ball and i needed to get everything within like a one minute clip so i just i said fuck it oh gotcha I don't know, All I think right. it's kind of funny that you got it huh. like team repeat and then you use a quick ball just kind of like, ha, I got this shiny. Yeah, it was fun. All right, so this is a clip under my previous incan uh, incarnation and this was during a community map quest of Legends Arceus. Basically, the, the concept was get a shiny in every area of the map and then if you got them all, then go and go do it again, but you get a different shiny every time. But... I will say this. There, this was not an outbreak. So watch this. Oh, okay. This was not an outbreak. Shiny Graveler, I'll take it. Oh, oh my god! Holy fuck! Yo! Yo, two wild shiny Gravelers in the same fucking area. Are you kidding me? Yeah, somehow, some way. Two random shiny gravelers spawned right next to each other. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it happened. That is so cool. That's awesome. I mean, I've never had that before. 
I mean, I don't like sh I don't like shiny graveler to begin with, but the fact that I found two two of them right next to each other, I mean, come on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great clip. I even said this in the in the clip. This isn't an outbreak. This is not an outbreak. <laughs> it wasn't an outbreak. So, you wow. should be. What? Oh, I was just saying. Wow, that's. That's awesome. All right, so this one you should be familiar with. If you're not, then it's been a long time. This is the clip that you guys featured in the Team Yell video. Oh, yeah. I recognize this one already. Yeah. One of the proudest moments in the history of my life. This lion. All right, Demon doesn't break the curse, but will the lion? Yes! Yes! Yes, 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 yes! The curse is over! <laughs> it's done, baby! It's over! <laughs> <sighs> I look so cringe without a beard. I look like I'm 17. <laughs> I love this clip so much. Honestly, I think you look good with and without facial hair. <sighs> Trust me. I look, like, my mods say otherwise, but I just, I just can't go without a beard anymore. I used to be able to, but I can't. I can't anymore. <laughs> All right. That's anyway. such a good clip. I love it. I know. Oh! It's over! It's over! Demon brings the shiny Octacoon! <laughs> I mean, the shiny, the shiny red lion! I wasn't even thinking. I just randomly said shiny Obstacle. I was like, what the crap? I didn't find a shiny Obstacle. I found a shiny Sokoleho. <laughs> and the reason why I'm so excited is only because of this. Um, nearly everyone who was doing these DAs with me found the Sogaleo before me. Actually, this Sogaleo is what caused the train of events which led one of my mods to being renaming herself Shiny Queen Elisa because she got this and then she got like a, a shiny in nearly every single DA we did together. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I'm kind of repeating this trend with Darkrai right now because everyone's finding it before me, but that's just my bad luck. But I think Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Oh, you go. Uh, um, when I first started doing like Dynamax Adventures, I think Shiny Sogoleo was one of my first uh, quick. Or it was actually one of my first DA shinies, and it was also one of my quickest. I think I got it in like six. My longest DA hunt was for Landorus, which is also why it's in my top 10 most hated, but that was off screen. On screen, it was uh, Kiram at, at 162. Oh, dang. But I I've made up for. But that clip, will, that will be featured in a later podcast, but that was actually a double shiny DA. My first ever one. No way. I haven't had that happen to me before. Yeah, I got shiny Trevenant and shiny Kiram in the same, in the same den. Dang. I did reclaim, did, I did, re I did reclaim that Trevenant though. Did you, um, phase at all while going for Sogaleo? Oh yeah. A lot. Uh, uh, the, the Lorantis was the latest phase. Oh man. I, 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 I've. Go ahead. Yeah, you go. Oh, I I'm scared that it's going to happen again to me for Rayquaza. I think I phased like three times already for it. <laughs> well, I phased probably two dozen times at least going after Darkrai on a different game. Like, I like to this, like right now, team, any member of Team Yell that wants to go for Darkrai is literally holding off on doing it because they are petrified to find it before me. Because I like they know I've been... Like, they know I have been so pissed off, and they know I have been hunting this thing for nearly two years, and they don't want to start the hunt, get it within a month, and then show it off, and then I'm out here still suffering, and we're like, okay. Yeah. Right. I, like, That's also uh, like, my reason, too. Like, this is a message for Team Yell. Everyone on Team Yell, guys, I am so far used to seeing Shiny Darkrai pop up before me. So if you guys want to start a Darkrai hunt, just go ahead and do it. I genuinely do not care if you find it before me. I just don't want you guys to think I'm going to come after you, both online and IRL, because you found a purple, purple feetless demon before me. <laughs> I think... Just a little off track here. I, I, I think that's one of the neatest things about Pokemon community, though, is that, like, for those who are shiny hunters, most shiny hunters have respect for other shiny hunters. Like, they don't want 
like you get the people that I'm sure you've experienced this that come in the chat like, oh, I'm gonna shine a hunter with you. I got mine in two, and you're like stuck at two thousand, haha, right? Like, cool, like congratulations. But I I'm not that type of person, right? Like, if I'm gonna congratulate the other person. You got the shiny. That's awesome. Your luck is better than mine. That's fine. RNG has blessed you. Um, but I think when you when you get to know other like uh shiny hunters and stuff, like we all kind of wait until that other person has found the shiny, um, because. You don't know how the luck is going to turn out for the other person, but you also just want to respect the other person that's shiny hunting. And for me, like, there's people like, oh, I'm going to shiny hunt Chespin. And I'm like, you're more than welcome to at this point. Like, it's I, I it's going to be a long time for me to hunt this one. So, like, you're more than welcome to. If your luck is better than mine, like, so be it. Um, but it's when people are kind of toxic about it and they're like, um, basically wanting to hunt it to get it there before you and just kind of like rub it in your face. Like, that's what I don't like. Yeah, I mean, Mike, it, like, Pure Genesis and I always shit about him starting the hunt and him getting early because he's a full odds hunter and he's a goddamn lucky full odds full, full yeah. hunter. So yeah. we shit about it all. We shit about it all the time, but we do it in good faith because we both have respect for each other as shiny hunters. And even if he does find it before me, I'm still going to congratulate him, but I'm also going to hate him at the same time because I'm still going for it. Yeah. It's all about the love hate relationship we have with our team. Exactly. But anyway, let's finish up the clip. Yes! Yes! Oh, guys! Thank you so much! Thank you so flippin' much! Also, oh I... Th God, guys, this is thank a, th you so much! This is also at a time where I didn't actually swear, so that's why I said flippin' instead of fucking. Uh, okay. And Bella, thank you for the thousand bits. Holy shit, guys, it's finally over. <laughs> Actually, correct myself. I didn't say the F word. I used any other swears, though. All right, but aside from those moments that we featured, are there any other, like, uh, Pokemon-related moments that either happened off-screen or on that uh, you care to bring up or just hit me with something? My most memorable one uh, is when I was shiny racing BP for the very first time. Uh, it was on Let's Go Pikachu Eevee, and I think he had Pikachu. I had Eevee. And I think we were tied. We were tied for so long. I was experiencing um, internet problems at the time, and at the time I was also streaming on a MacBook. And for anybody that's ever streamed on a MacBook, you know they're complete garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, and... After I kind of just gave up, I was like, "Yeah, I can't fix the internet. I can't fix my computer at this point. Like, I, I'm gonna, you're more, you win, BT. Like, I, I can't continue with the race." And he took the win. After, after the race ended and we ended stream, I think, um, I think he ended stream too. I found another shiny. And I was going for Volpix at the time, and I found it right after I sent him the message. Like, yeah, I waved the white flag. And that was like, God, gosh dang it! I wish, I wish I had that on stream. Just, just that moment, because <laughs> we would have been tied again. I but agree. he, he technically won. So that's my favorite off-stream moment, I believe. <laughs> um, mine is uh pretty much similar to yours because it involves Beefy. I mean, it was the first time meeting him. I mean, what like, as you guys know, I scheduled these podcasts months in advance. So by the time like. Like, I think it was around February or March, he reached out to me um, saying that whenever he schedules him for whenever he scheduled, whenever I scheduled him for a podcast, he would like to see if he would, if I would be open to the idea of doing an in-person podcast. Because I didn't know at the time where he lived and he told me he lived like a few hours from the Tennessee area that I'm from. So yeah. I was like, huh, you know what? Why not? Let's go for it. So it was just lucky that with uh, the stars aligned and we were able to do it properly. I mean, heck, the first time he met me, he was like, like he had to have to look up at me because uh, he didn't think, like he didn't realize how tall I really was until he was face to face with me. Because I, guys, I'm six foot three. I can touch the ceiling of my apartment. I'm that tall. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, it was just really cool hanging out with him. I mean, uh, I mean, heck, I gave him a good meal. He likes my cooking. Um, we just sat here after that. We shine after our, our podcast. We just sat here and shiny hunted for a little while. <laughs> uh, funny, funny time. Um, 
I think I'm pretty sure you know about this, but um, I have two bean redeems, um, regular and spicy. So me, me and him did a regular bean boozle redeemed. I don't know how, and I don't know when. It wasn't when he was here, but it was sometime before. A spicy bean got mixed into the regular beans, and I got that spicy bean, not expecting it, and my mouth was just on fire for like a oh. solid 10 minutes. Oh no! Wait, I, isn't there a clip of that? I think I remember there was a clip of that. Yeah, there's a there's a clip of that. It's not it's not a chat command, but there is a clip of that. Mods, can you go uh go look into the VOD archive and find that clip, please? But anyway, yeah, that was uh, yeah, no, 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 Bella, the 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 beans, even though they got knocked over, they were not mixed in with the regular ones because the other one was uh was uh was like was closed up. Be Aaron, you and I both know that was not sabotage. I was looking at you the whole damn time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, aside from the... Uh, he also, like, flipped his shit whenever I started doing my can-can dance because he was like... His eyeballs, like, popped out of his skull and he started laughing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a fun... It was a fun time hanging out with him. But even though, in all fairness, I mean, before me and Beefy, I met most of my mod team... Um, IRL and that was because of Pokemon it wasn't um, it wasn't Pokemon related but it was po it was based on the fact that I met these people through Pokemon mm. I mean hold on let me get my cat off my lap <laughs> and out of my jacket <clears throat> let me grab this really quick yeah like I would have never met these awesome people IRL if it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for uh, Twitch and whatnot. But yeah, I love were, that. That is so cool. Yeah, these guys are my these guys are my found family. They'll always be my found family. That that's the one thing that is a moment that I've always cherished too is meeting up with Pokemon creators for the very first time, especially ones you've talked to for the longest time. Uh, my first TwitchCon experience was in 2019. I went in going as a Splatoon cr cr creator. And I was kind of like basically alone at that entire time, just roamed around and I didn't really know what to do or like I didn't have people to really hang out with. But after joining the Pokemon community, experiencing TwitchCon in 2022, uh, um, meeting up with so many Pokemon creators that I have been talking to, befriended and all that kind of stuff. Or even like if you had you you were planning on meeting up and then you end up crossing paths and someone recognizes you or maybe you didn't have an idea that you're gonna they were gonna be there and they recognize you it's like what the heck like that's that's crazy like hello and being able to hang out with them and seeing the people who you've talked to be actually like nice in person just the way they are on stream makes it ten times better and more memorable for the experience. And I think one of my most favorite moments, I think, was in 2022. Um, I was eating with my brother. I take I taken him to to dinner, and Smarpy was actually at the bar with a bunch of other friends like Pokio. Um, I'm trying to remember everybody else. I also Adam TV wasn't there yet. Uh, but yeah, he was just the bar at the bar. He's walking over and he goes. How's it going, Sal? He like pats my back, and I'm like, "Whoa, Smarpy, hi!" <laughs> and I was completely shocked. Like, I thought that was so neat and and cool because Smarpy Smarpy is an awesome person. I don't oh, know yeah. if anybody's ever checked out his channel, but yeah, yeah, I know who Smarpy cool is. I know who Smarpy is. He's a uh, he's step he's on my um I won't I don't normally give away people that I plan to recruit, but he is on my recruitment list for seasons four and five of the podcast. I don't know if he's gonna say yes, but I'm gonna reach out to him to see if he would like to appear. Yeah, I, that'd be awesome if he joins. I think he's great. He'd be he'd be a really fun to interview for sure. Oh yeah, I don't I don't doubt that for a minute. We're, no, we're somehow some way we're normally always on the same showdown team every time. Like I think the Masuda <laughs> showdown is the only exception where I was not on his team. That was that time I was on Shine's team because normally Smarpy and Shine are never put on the same team. So it's either you're either on the team with Shine or you're on the team with Smarpy. Normally I'm on the team with Smarpy. I, I've been on a mix of both of theirs. But yeah, um, I had every intention on going to TwitchCon this year, but unfortunately, um, Kat's medical expenses and also breaking my back kind of put a put a damper in that plan. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, maybe maybe I'll go to PAX 
uh, next year. I mean, it's in a couple of months, so I'm thinking about going out that going out there. But I just have to see if anybody else and uh, anyone else that I know is going. So maybe we can uh, share a room or something like that. Because I mean, I could drive all the way to Boston. It's not going to be that much big of a trouble for me. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I drove, uh, I drove from here to Michigan ten hours. I think I can get to Boston in that same amount of time. That's a long drive. I've never driven that far before. <laughs> Well, to be fair, um, it was only me in the car, and I don't really stop unless I needed to either really, really, really have to go to the bathroom or I needed gas. So I could be on oh, the road okay. for hours on end. See, if I can't do that. I start falling asleep on the road. Nah, I'm a. Uh, you. Yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah, that was a fun road trip. But uh, yeah, I mean, heck, I drove out to South Carolina earlier this year to hang out with Shrix. And we actually did do some Pokemon stuff, which is actually one of my favorite moments of this year. Um, uh, he and I were doing this uh, little collab of a uh, uh, Pokemon Rescue Team. We want to get it off the ground again, but unfortunately, it was his game, not mine. So we can't like stream it together because he's not. Uh... Oh, there's the clip for the wrong bean. You can clip. Yeah, there's the clip for the bean. But anyway, um. Like, uh, once Strix is able, like, I'm doing, like, as soon as I can help out and get Strix, um, off the ground again, um, he's going to start streaming again, and we're gonna get that, try to get that project back off the ground, because he can't do it at his capacity right now. I mean, I could if I had his game, but I don't, so, there's that. Yeah. But, yeah. Alright, so, normally at this point, we would discuss Pokemon news, but unfortunately, you haven't played through Gen 9, so we can't really talk about the DLC. So I think it's safe for this podcast. We just skip that topic, and then we move on to the last topic of discussion, which is any future plans or goals you want to achieve as a creator, either in the near future or sometime in 2024. So whatever you want, like if there's anything you want to spill or plans you got, hit us. All right. For my creator, like being a creator myself, uh, my plans are honestly just to get back into streaming a little bit more. I had to, I was kind of sadly and unfortunately pulled away from it for a few months. Like I was only able to stream like once or twice a month. And that was because my coworker had gone out on medical leave. So I was kind of like just tossed everything and would be at work for like 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, and I was also working seven days a week for, for four months straight. So um it unfortunately took a lot of my time and i didn't have a lot of time to stream and i didn't want to stream for just an hour because for those who know like if you're a content creator yourself or even just a live streamer yourself like once you get started once you're an hour in you're like that's too short let's keep going and if it's too short you feel kind of sad about it because it, it it's over like in the snap of a finger um so i don't like streaming for just an hour um yeah technically it is still more time but i also like to create more time just because i have more fun with it and I like it, it's more memorable to me everybody has their own preference though mm -hmm. so that's just one thing that i'm more focused on myself is that um starting in january i want i'm planning on streaming a lot more often like luckily this month um i my coworker came back and i am able to stream a little bit more but we're also in a busier time period for the job that i work at uh just due to the holidays so that's my focus is getting back into streaming um more often again uh just to get back out there and then another goal for myself is to try and at least find time to at least edit one video a month and create small short reels again because that was also taken away from me i didn't have time to do that anymore um in t in terms of like ideas for team yell i have an idea in mind it's it's been in the works for the past year um but it sadly got changed a little bit just the way that the structure is working out um i don't have the full detail well i can't fully disclose the details yet but uh, i'm excited to hopefully have that fully finished uh at the beginning of the year next year and i can't wait to announce it honestly i so, can't wait to hear it yeah <laughs> I can't wait to hear what's. What, I can't hear the hear the juicy tidbits. Yeah, what about you? What are your plans? <laughs> uh, well, right now I'm trying to get the 2K followers, and once I do, I'm gonna be doing a 24 hour stream. And um, I've I've also been thinking about this a lot regarding um the path I'm taking, but um, I at the moment 
here's like at the moment here's my promise but or here's my declaration it may change it may not but I know I'm not going to get... I, I don't think I'm going to get 2K followers by the end of the year, but if I can hit 2K followers within the first two months of 2024, I've decided that I will formally bring back the Dark Conquest series. Because I gave it up I gave it up to uh, kind of just kind of think about who I am as a creator outside of it, and also because um, um, of details... Um, I mean, uh, there were some things about it that um, just weren't clicking with the community, and I just felt like nobody started to care. Nobody really cared about it, so I want to bring it back and see if the newer members of the Goon Squad can see the Dark Conquest for what it is, and potentially like the character of Zeo as new viewers over the people who have known the Dark Kingdom and the Dark Kingdom Dark King Zeo for as long as they've known me. So. So yeah, um, if I can have if that can happen within the first few months, I want to do that, and um, I want to start at some point. I want to start a dream team quest, a shiny dream team quest. I don't know which game, but I'll figure it out. And then I also want to finally dive into a soul link. I have no idea who my partner is going to be. I'm still thinking about who I want it to be. I want it to be one specific person. But the problem is, I don't think he would be interested because every time I try to do like something with him, he basically, I have to pull him by a chain to drag him into doing this stuff with me. So, but yeah, um, that's like the main things I got going on right now. I mean, uh, in terms of like overall, in terms of like, uh, in terms of like the overall continuing goal that is for me to share my love of Pokemon, I'm actually going to start doing YouTube content a little bit. I mean, not entirely, but I have recorded all my Indigo Disc DLC uh, gameplay. So one of my mods has offered to edit it. So I need to make sure I get it to him by the end of the day, to be honest. But I'm going to be posting some videos on my YouTube outside of the podcast. And um, yeah, there's still more podcasts to come, guys. I got a lot of people in mind. Yeah. There's there's this one also goal like to hopefully finally like next year I would like for my chestbin hunt to officially be over. Same but with my dark gray hunt. If it doesn't happen, I guess so be it. But yeah, that's the one hunt that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, um, I want my I want my dark gray to end. <sighs> I don't I don't want to take it any further, but I have to. I, but also, I'm. Oh, go ahead. I'm rooting. Oh, I'm. I'm just saying. I'm rooting for you to get your 2K. I. I hope that you can reach it by the end of the year. But if it doesn't happen, that's okay. I. I know that it'll probably happen at the beginning of the year. Um. I just want to say that again that I am super proud of you as a creator, and I love the content and the ideas that you bring forth to to the Pokemon community. So, yeah, that's that's just something that I wanted to say to you. And, and I, I appreciate I, having me. I appreciate it, and I appreciate being part of Team Yell. It's been the one of the greatest honors I've had as a creator. I can't like I can't under under say that. It's you were guys were the very first Pokemon stream team to reach out to me and say, Hey, we think you're cool, we want you on the team. I mean, there are other Pokemon teams that I wish I could be a part of right now, but you guys are my home. Even if I wind up joining one of those teams in the near future, you guys are still gonna be my home. You guys are still gonna be my main team. So no matter what, no matter what path, like I'm still planning on getting our logo tattooed on my leg. Just to not only forget where I forget where I not only to never forget where I come from, but also to show that I am dedicated to being a part of this team. Even if I'm not as vocal as I am with my own community, I still want I still am a as Sonic Buckley invented, a loud and proud member of the Team Yell stream team. Yeah, I that was one thing that our focus, like both BP and I had, is that we wanted to have that that place where people can feel inclusive and proud to be a part of just the team and be happy to be a part of the team as well. Because like, I know what it's like, like, especially like what you said, there's other teams that you wanted to probably be on and you probably tried your, to reach out and have that opportunity to join, or maybe you had thought about it. Um, it it's happened to me too. Like I tried applying, I tried reaching out and I was denied in, um, uh, multiple times. And I was like, well, I've always wanted to have a team myself, but I've been for anybody that doesn't know, like I said, I've been streaming for years since 2015. It took me three years to become an affiliate. 
if I ever become partner, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't really want to, like, of course it'd be nice to, but it's something like if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, right? So the fact that I was able to even have this team created because of knowing some partnered friends and um, big shout out to Mia Easily because she's the one that helped me create the team. Big shout uh, out. As I used to edit videos for her. So super grateful for her and the fact that she was willing to allow us to do that. And that's what B Beefy and I wanted to do is we wanted to make other people feel welcome where they may have not felt welcomed before. So. And you do. You do that without Thank question. You. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> that is our yeah. goal. Yeah. But yeah. But but still, my overall goal is also the same. I mean, to share my love of Pokemon with the whole world. I mean, I don't I genuinely do not care if I ever get that check mark next to my name. I will forever be the Poke Network and I will forever share my love of Pokemon as long as I have a heart beating in my chest. Likewise. All right. So, Supa, again, I want to thank you so, 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 so much for having you for not only appearing on the show, but having me, helping me wrap up season two of the show. You are the you are the twentieth content creator I have interviewed in the spam of one year. In the past awesome. three hundred sixty five days, I have interviewed twenty amazing, funny, fun filled creators, and it has been the greatest honor of my life to have interviewed so many amazing people. Even though we unfortunately lost the biggest hearted soul of the entire Poke Nerds Inc. history, the show will forever be changed. Thanks to you, Turbo. I yeah, cannot Turbo, I can go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say Turbo was an absolute gem. I remember just hanging out on their stream and it just it was always a vibe there. And I remember I got so excited once they raided me because I was like, oh my gosh, like that like I love Turbo and the fact that Turbo raided me, it was super, super wholesome. And I'm glad I was able to return the favor because that's something that I always do is that if someone raids me, I always do my best to raid them back. Yeah, I know. I raided him. I raided him numerous times and he raided me while I was doing my cat cam that I used to do. And it's like, oh, man, I miss this. I miss this guy. Turbo's last on screen appearance was my podcast and it was still T the greatest honor of my life to be able to interview this man. He should have been partnered, but the system did not, the system didn't want him to be, but he should have been partnered. He should have, he should have gotten that check mark. <clears throat> but guys, again, that's why we also wear the bow ties, everybody for turbo season two is dedicated to him. But also again, guys, if you are not already, please, please drop the follow to, Miss Supercell right here. Please drop her that follow if you have not already. Please drop her that follow. Thank you so much in advance. I appreciate it. And look forward to seeing you guys all on stream. Let me know if you guys are coming over from uh, Spence's channel over here. And yeah. All right. So first off, I want to announce this. So as you guys know, this is the end of season two. So the Poke Nerds Inc. is going to go on hiatus. But we're not going to go on hiatus long. So if you've been around the show enough, you'll know this date. January 14th, 2024. The season three premiere is on. And January 14th is an important date because it is the one year anniversary of Pokey Nerds Inc. I started wow. the show January 14th, 2023. The one the one year anniversary to the day. I have a brand new guest lined up for you guys. And I've wanted him on the show for a while now. So I finally get the chance to interview him. So I cannot wait to interview this guy. I won't say who he is yet, but three weeks, guys. Three more in three weeks, you guys get the season three premiere of Pokey Nerds Inc. Can't believe it's only three weeks away. That's crazy. And the fact that you've been doing this for a year too. So that went by I, super quick. This was a fever dream that I almost never pulled the bullet on. I never pulled the trigger on or got off the ground. But I'm just, I'm still humbled, honored, and fortunate that tw 20, soon to be 30, absolutely amazing people said yes. <laughs> All well, right. I say yes because it's a great idea and i'm glad that you you did it honestly so 
I'm glad too. All right, but uh, as per the rule, the guest chooses the raid. So, who's getting the raid right. love today? Let's see. Let's see who I have on the line. Do, do, do. One last hydrate before we go out. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you for the hydrations. Yeah. Thanks, Dry. Mm -hmm. We do have a Team Yell member online. Uh, Ooh. Tech. Tech? Yeah, oh, yeah. Send it to tech. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The winner of the Team Yell Street Shiny Race 2023. If I'm, oh, wait, no. Or was that Gaming No, that was, that was Trainer Frankie. Oh, Trainer Frankie. But why, did, yeah. why did I get the two mixed up? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why I got the two mixed up. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. But yeah, Tech. We're going right Tech. Yeah, let's go ahead and send the raid over to Tech. All right, Tech Gamer MB it is. I have other I have other people on, but um, I think it looks like they're ending soon. All right, we'll rate him. All right, so Supa, how do you normally end a sh How do you normally end a stream? What's your outro? My outro. Uh, I usually say thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. Um, I usually thank everybody who has either uh, sub, cheered, or donated if they have. And I just say thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me where you could have been hanging out with somewhere else. And have an amazing rest of your day or night, whatever time zone you guys are in. And I'll see you guys in the next stream. My my outro is stay safe, stay strong, stay tuned for more Pokemon exclusive content. And as always, this has been the Top Goon, your man Spence. Beast out. I'll see you in the raid. Y'all have a great night, you nerds. And I cover the, my hand with the camera. I love but, that. But... In honor of the True Turbo, from all of us here at Pokey Nerds Incorporated, we say stay safe, stay rocking, stay true to yourself. That's a wrap for Season 2. I'll see you guys in three weeks for the Season 3 premiere of Pokey Nerds Inc. And from all of us here, we say bye-bye. We'll see you next time. One thing I say is stay super. See ya. Adios. Bye, guys.